Sweet, wow, sweet, that's... sweet tunes of uh, Angel The Hotheads. The that hot was the band. I actually I had to watch this movie in closed caption because I couldn't understand what the fuck Olivia Gruner was saying. I, I had to put it on closed caption. I am finding I'm often putting on closed caption these days. people just mumble. They really, or we're they, just losing our hearing. I don't know. I, I don't think know. it's a little of both, but nowadays it seems to be even worse. Well, nowadays, the way they do sound, they... Do the dialogue way low in the mix and sound effects and music way high in the mix. It's fucking awful. It's fucking. It's probably to make up for the fact that they write horrible dialogue. It's no. an afterthought because you got to spend it all on CGI. Marvel, you know, when we're complaining Marvel about Marvel dialogue, Marvel. I just want to say I, I told you about this earlier. I'm, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start watching that Narco show on Netflix. I you hear didn't a lot tell of good about things this. about this. Yes, I did because did? I had this gripe about it. It's actually it's, it's an enjoyable show. I don't know if you would like it, but it's an enjoyable show. But since it's about Pablo Escobar, who is you know Colombian drug lord, sure. T- 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 half to three quarters of every episode's in Spanish, so yeah. we have their subtitles. I don't know what's, if it's my TV or just Netflix sucks, but every oh, yeah. third or fourth line doesn't show up. That's right. <laughs> and it's in fucking infuriating. I found out if I push the pause button, because you can tell when it's not showing up. I push the pause button, it'll show. It'll appear. Yeah. So I'm constantly having this like, start and stop, and it's fucking frustrating. Me. That, I don't know if it's because everyone's using Netflix now that they're fucking, I don't know what. I don't know. It seems like whatever you're using to process it. Like, are you watching? I'm using my TV. You're using a TV? Yeah. You might, you might have to invest in, like, an Apple TV or something that has a better processor in I it. I love that I have to invest in more shit just to play n- non-free, you know, TV. Yeah, I know. That Hey, that's the way the world works. Murray, uh, from one bad thing to another, of course, that being your Netflix, uh, we're getting into a new name, and he's going... You know what? Before we talk about a movie I don't want to talk about, I want to talk about a a show I am enjoying, besides Narcos. All right. And this is the moment where you're like, oh, man, Tim's going to talk about his fucking glory days, youth shit. You can, like, fast forward 10 minutes because... The time he had a starter jacket, that Buffalo Bills starter jacket. Oh, man, jacket. some fuckers jumped me and ripped the pockets out. Oh, fuck, I hope you're dead, you <laughs> fucking piece of shit. <laughs> but anyway, no, this isn't about the Buffalo Bills. This is about an even greater team. <laughs> a team that won? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and doesn't, but does, and gets even less respect... Then, of course, you know. Of course, everyone who's a regular listener knows I'm going to talk about the Detroit basketball. Even though they didn't say that back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching the Michael Jordan thing, the uh, Last Dance Griff on ESPN. I have been hearing great things. It is. It is great. I have to admit, ESPN knows how to do these things, like the Thirty for Thirties. Yeah. I watched so many. I didn't give a fuck about the subject, but they did a good they, job. Exactly. That, that's what good documentary uh, uh, workage is. I used to. Right. I used to workage. watch all. Yeah. You know, I'm. I'm having a good time with words today. I that's I good. Love that's good. You know, it makes me feel really confident about this episode. Yeah, I, off, this, I, off this jump, you're like, I don't know how to talk anymore, dude. I, I've been huffing so much glue because I was gluing shit all day. Yeah, so you gotta my, do something to pass. I'm the running time. on like a brain cell right now. What you need to do to pass time is watch this this documentary because specifically the last two episodes, which were about the rivalry between the Detroit Bad Boy Pistons. Yeah. My, I've said many times, my child childhood team, my favorite sports team of all time. 
and I want to give some fucking credit to ESPN for being very down the middle because this is basically a blowjob to Michael Jordan. This yeah. thing. But they're being the, they're they're really not. They're actually showing the, the shitty side of Michael Jordan. Like That's the, good. Like the like I mean. It's funny because what made him so great is also why he's an asshole because he's so he's psychotically competitive. Like he can never let anyone show him up. Right. So if somebody does it. So I can res- I respect his intensity. And I'll I'll be the first to admit, even though I never liked the Bulls, obviously, Jordan's the greatest of all time. LeBron James, you're not even close. Okay. Yeah. Not even close. Not even the same ballpark. And one of the reasons why is because the Pistons used to kick Jordan's ass and it made him tough. Yeah. LeBron's never experienced that. He's never had, and I mean, and he's never experienced those kind of teams. I mean, fuck. I think about. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Everyone says like their child was the greatest. No, my era, '80s, was the greatest era for American basketball. It just was. So many teams were stacked. I mean, there's a lot of junk teams like every fucking yeah. you know time. But there's so many stacked teams. The Celtics had four Hall of Famers starting Jesus. for them. Jesus. And I think the Lakers did too. That sounds about right. I mean, back in the '80s, that's what it mainly was: was the right. Lakers or Celtics. Right. And they but they talk about that, which I enjoy because I've always said, and it's true: the Pistons never got their fucking due. They were a great. Fu- they beat all the teams, all those great teams. They beat them all. They beat yeah. the Lakers. They beat the Celtics, and they used to kick the shit out of the bear, uh, the Bears, the Bulls, the Bulls. <laughs> regularly. So I, I also want to say too, and because basically what I'm saying is, I was there, so I'm going to tell you what really happened. Because some of the shit, I don't know about this thing. But, okay, as far as the rivalry grows between us and the Bulls, as far as I'm concerned, we never had a rivalry. I never, I, I mean, I didn't root for, I, I root for the Pistons, obviously, but I never respected them. We always kicked their ass. You can't have a rivalry when you're always kicking someone's ass. Yeah, it's like when people talk about, uh, this is probably only locally uh, 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 logical, but Michigan and OSU. Yes. We've lost to them like, 14 years in a row. Exactly. Not a rivalry. Right. So, but I understand why. And to this day, the Bulls hate the Pistons. Like, they, I mean, you'd see the anger still in Michael Jordan's, like, voice when he talks about it. I understand it because, as much as I've, I've always said, I hate the Celtics. Yeah. Because they were our rivals. But they weren't our rivals because they were like, no, the Lakers are our rivals. So I understand where you're coming from, Chicago fans, but like, it's, it wasn't a rivalry. Just right. like we didn't really have a rivalry with the Celtics. They kicked our ass until we kicked their ass. Yeah. Much like the Bulls. You know, We kicked their ass until they kicked our ass. So, no, there was no rivalry. But here's where I, I want to point out. I was so proud of ESPN for doing this. Because, of course, we all, if you know anything about this, you know when, we, when the Bulls finally kicked our ass. The Celtics, and that's the Celtics. The Pistons walked off like with like twenty seconds left in the yeah, game. That was like game five of the playoffs. Yeah, whatever. they got bounced. No, it was like four. They got bounced. They got like swept. Four. Okay, and they're embarrassed, obviously. And the Pistons, uh, we got a, we got a full. They had lost like three of their starters at that point. Like, and wasn't that the season that like uh, I can't remember the names, but we lost like someone to the expansion draft, and we were no, just no. I mean, no, it was. The Bulls won fair and square. Oh I no, mean, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, but it was like the nucleus of the bad not, boy Pistons. No, I we thought. were no, we were coming off a championship. Okay, okay. And so no, I'm not. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. The the Bulls were the better team, and the Pistons just got old, just like the Celtics got old when we were playing them. Yeah, I mean Isaiah was in the league for like twelve not, years at that point. Yeah, or something. which which back in those days that was a career. Ten yeah. to twelve years was a good fucking career. Nobody played twenty except for Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. Nobody played for twenty fucking years like everyone does now. No one will fucking leave now. But so they walked off, and I even, even I to this day, and I didn't I didn't like it back then, and I don't like it now. I thought that's some bush league shit. You should like shake your fucking you know, opponent's hand. Yeah. So I don't I'm not making excuse for that. But what they pointed out, and I've always said this, the Celtics did the exact same thing to us, and nobody ever brings it up. Larry mm-hmm. Bird just walked off the court. Only guy who shook Isaiah's hand was Kevin McHale. And that was because fucking Isaiah put his hand out. Yeah. So it you know it's, there's no there's, there's a precedent for this, and I'm fine with that, man. I I love it. I love bitter rivalries. Yeah. That's what's missing in sports. Yeah. There's none of that anymore, and be, it's because everyone's just like, yeah, fuck it, we're making money. So I give them props for putting in let letting Isaiah explain his shit. Yeah. So hey. Get over it. and like really, who needs to get over it? It's fucking Michael Jordan because he still fucking hates my he, he and and then I'm, I'm sure that in later episodes, the next few episodes, when they talk about the dream team. Yeah, they're gonna talk about how they fucked over Isaiah because Jordan's like, I'm not playing on that team if Isaiah's on it. When, yeah, 
And it's and what the reason why that's so fucked up was is because Isaiah was going to be on the 1980 Olympic team, mm-hmm. and we boycotted that year. Oh, so he shit. never got to play. If he like played on an Olympic team, I go, who cares? Who gives a fuck? But let the guy have like one thing more on his resume. Yeah, I thought I kept reading like people were saying like, no, Isaiah didn't want to be on that team. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> There's so many mixed stories out there right now. It's a really interesting story to follow. It, I mean, it's, it's, if I'm waiting for the 30, 30, for 30, for 30. For the dream there. team? Yeah, they probably, they probably have one by now. They probably had one. Yeah, they might have. But, yeah. I mean, like, fucking Larry Bird could barely walk, and they put him on the team. Come on, like, Bird. <laughs> fucking, that's bullshit. Well, he should be on the team. He's like a legend, but I'm just saying he barely played at all because his back was so fucked up at that time. So it's like because people are saying, well, John Stockton was a better point guard than Isaiah. And if you're talking about a pure point guard, who, the point guard is basically you just pass the ball. You set people up. Mm-hmm. I will agree. John Stockton, because Isaiah was like a shoot first kind of guy. You know, he's yeah. a point guard. But come on, like stiffs like Chris Mullen on the fucking it was, you don't even know who he is. He's just some white guy with oh, a fruit I know cut. Him from NBA Jam. Yes, he's on the team. Come That's on, bullshit. That's bullshit. So I'm sure they'll get into that. So I recommend people w- just it's listen just, to our episode on Angel Town. Do not do not watch Angel Town. Oh my listen God. to our episode on it and watch this instead. Yeah, why? Well, I I love that uh, a quote from Wilt Chamberlain came out where he was just dogging uh, Jordan because he's like, I don't know why it's LeBron and Jordan. Wilt Chamberlain died like 20 years ago. Where's Wilt Chamberlain? (laughs) (laughs) I think it was Wilt Chamberlain, but it was when he was like still alive or something. Well, LeBron wasn't playing, I think. I think Wilt was dead by the time. Okay. God damn, man. Well, this is why I. This is why I'll say. Well, you finish your point first. I, I I think it was Wilt Chamberlain who was saying it, but he was just like. Look, Jordan came around, and they changed the rules to make him the god he is. When I was playing, I was a god, and they changed the rules to make me less effective. I'm glad you brought that up, Griff, because that was another thing they touched on, which I appreciated. The the whole they, – they never really talked about how the NBA – all the media was against the Pistons. We were the number one here. We were Rick fucking Flair of the NBA. In perspective, baseball nowadays, the shift – Everybody hates the shift. They hate teams who do the shift. They hate teams that are doing uh, relief pitchers in the first inning and then throwing in multiple pitch. They hate strategy. The point of the game is to win. The Pistons did what it took to win. Right, and they so. learned. And they learned it from the Celtics. I mean, I have so many. That's why I, I hate. I, I understand. Like I said, I understand why you hate the Pistons because that's why I to this day hate fucking the Celtics because there's so many heartbreaking wins. But it toughened our team up and made us a great team, just like we made the fucking Bulls a great team. Yeah. But they pointed out how you know, before then it was always me, you know, Lakers Celtics every fucking year basically, yeah. and that's what. And then. They saw Jordan was on the, the, the ascension, and then we just came in and just fucked everything up because yep. they wanted to just transition from Lakers, uh, Pist- uh, Lakers, Celtics to the Bulls, and yep. we were that gap right in the middle. And so we never got our due, never got our respect. I mean, Detroit was a bullshit city at the time. Exactly. Like we were just a dump. They didn't even play in Detroit. They played in uh, Pontiac. They right? played in the Silver Dome. Silver the Lions Dome. Yeah. Played. And then you have Chicago up and running, you know? So you got East Coast, West Coast, and then you have a big Midwest city, too. Of course, that's going to be a huge market draw. Right. So fuck all y'all ESPN people. More, P- more, more. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that they're actually pointing out no, these I, things. I'm, yeah. I'm oh, the saying, media in general? I'm saying the media at the time yes. were pushing that agenda instead of, yeah. you know. Well, the oh. NBA was pushing it. And. That that tell that's another thing reason why you just I, you made up so many great points for that Will Chamberlain thing. Thank you for like reminding me shit because you're talking about rule changes. Yeah. LeBron James could not play like that's why Jordan was the best because look, fucking Will Chamberlain was huge. He was the Shaq of his time. That's yeah. why he scored 100 points because nobody was his size. Yeah, 30 Jordan was game, like Jordan was six six and like a skinny guy. Yes, he was, and he was getting hammered. By the teams, which you can't, you can't even touch anyone now. Like, yeah. I'm sorry, man. Golden State Warriors would have done nothing in the '80s because those motherfuckers are soft as shit. Yeah. All right. But yeah, so that's why. I mean, that's why. Yeah, Jordan is the best because he was fuck- like LeBron's a big guy. Yes, that's where I. I'm like, I don't know. Not that Le- he's. I don't think. And I'm not saying. I'm not saying he sucks because we live in this world now. If you say one thing's good, you got to say the other thing sucks. Yeah, yeah. LeBron's great. He's the greatest of this generation. Right. But he's not the greatest of all time. Yeah. 
Murray, this is great basketball I know what, talk. I man. know why. I, I like we became a sports radio show all of a sudden. I mean, I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry for people. The three people that are tuning in for Olivia Gruner, and they're like, "What the <laughs> fuck is this bullshit?" <laughs> Don't worry. Are you ready? Because yeah, I'm ready for an Olivia Groner. We, <laughs> we, I mean, he immediately went to the hit list of horrible people that we just I, immediately. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I, I don't. Want, this is our first introduction, to Olivia Groner. Okay, so I don't want to get to like it's possible. Yeah, even though usually when with the people when we hate a character, it's usually because the actor is a piece of shit in real yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. But we don't know. We We're really judging don't. Olivia Gruner on this one performance. One very <laughs> odd mixed performance. Because I was about to say, he's right up there with Frank Ducks. He's right up there he's with up Lorenzo. There with Ginty, dude. Seagal, Ginty. But At least one thing I'll give Olivia, I, I, I breezed over his Wikipedia. Okay. So I'll give him one thing. Unlike Frank Dukes, he apparently has a real military career. He was actually was like whatever the French version of a Green Beret. So he's got... According to Wikipedia, who fucking knows? But according to Wikipedia, he's got legit credentials. He was a kickboxing champion. Okay. And he was in the military, like a badass, like mercen not mercenary, but like Green Beret type. No shit. Okay. So he was a commando and a champion. So I'll give him that. This was around the time that like they were getting like, uh, what's his name from Jim Cotta? So they were probably like, let's get real badasses to be actors. Well, though they're totally trying to create their own Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh yeah, no. He's like a poor man, Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, he right is down to a French accent. Man, and we're back in the two up. That's that's very unfair for us to do to do Jean Claude at his peak from the height last week. to the depths, <laughs> from the tip to the tap. I know it's like Griff. We I don't, I'm kind of like I, we're just doing this because we prom. We're actually doing it because we actually had the notes like written up. Yeah. We're like we're not wasting our time by writing these we notes were and not fun going it. over the notes. No, no we're fun. gonna have a good time. Yeah, because. If you know anything, if you listen to our show regularly, you know the best episodes are usually ones where we're just shitting exactly. on people. And we're going to be shitting on everybody in this fucking movie but one guy. Uh, the true hero so of this fucking in this movie. movie. Murray, kick us to the trailer. All right. Well, I'm Griff, I hope the fucking uh, these cosplay army dudes that are storming the, all the state capitals. Can you do me a favor, people, and go off in the woods and play Red Dawn with each other until we figure this shit out because you're not helping the situation. And uh, if they, they keep doing this, we're all going to be in Angel Town, Griff, because we're all going to be dead. <laughs> so <laughs> smoke, put that in your pipe and smoke it and listen to, listen to an Angel Town trailer. Angel Town. He is a champion. He's a big celebrity in Europe. Five world titles. He came alone to the mean streets of L.A. The untamed streets in the city of the angels. The angry streets of Los Angeles. The get-even streets of Angel Town. A place where the history is written in pain. Here, trouble is the rule. The police always come too late. No one is safe. They can only push this man so far. I don't want to fight me. Then he draws the line. Don't mess with me. Because this man has a limit. They picked on the wrong man. Now they will pay the price. His justice is one on one. His truth is in the streets, and he speaks the language they understand. Uh, all right, we still have this right here. And one on one, and no one moves until it's over. World kickboxing champion Olivier Gruner, Teresa Saldana, Angel Town. He's up. 
All right, everybody, welcome back from that trailer. And uh, we is are... there even a trailer? I don't think there is a trailer. <laughs> I don't know if there that is. we I might don't not know. have had a trailer. I don't know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a trailer for that Last Dance uh, Chicago Bulls. Thing there we if go. We don't, if if there is no it. trailer, we're just gonna play that. <laughs> Uh, but Murray, let's start this fucking hate fest of Olivia Gruner. Let's let's get this going. Very odd opening. Very odd. It's very somber. We get that. And we just have a man driving around in like an airbrush. Oh my god! Can we talk about that car? It's actually a nice car, but he, it's like he went to the flea market and got the guy that airbrushes T-shirts yes. to like paint his car. He's got like purple and. And like yellow, which I didn't know. I was like, "What's that?" But then I'm like, "Ah, Laker colors." Lakers, I get yeah. it. But like the flames and like like scales, like reptile scales. It had scales uh, on it. It was, it was so oh, weird. it was horrible. It's ruined that car. Oh, so he's just cruising through LA. Little, uh, we're, we're, like an angel. Yeah, like an angel. Well, his name is Angel. His name is Angel. And we're like, he, uh, spoiler alert: he's the villain of the movie. Yet it's a very heroic beginning because he's like driving around East LA and he's just looking like, "What has become of my city?" That's yeah. what you're. That's a vibe you're getting. That exactly the vibe we're getting, and this is the man who's already established a gang. We'll find out, you know, yeah. shortly. But he's already established a gang. He's got his own territory and everything. But yet we're following him like he's some kind of character <laughs> that we're gonna get along with, that we're right. gonna feel for. Right. And then he just pulls over an and... empty lot where you know you'd expect to see some rugrats playing football or something. You know, yeah, overgrown grass. And then we see, uh, and. If you we got for any of our like non uh, American listeners, you know it's 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 hard as fuck to get a gun in America. So none of these <laughs> gangs are carrying guns. We have a black gang that carries canes. Yes. Apparently they're big Clockwork Orange fans. They you know they had the suspenders and they the had in the eyelashes. Yep. And, and we have just like a fucking grunge gang, I guess I call them. This is white, like, 90s grunge band gang. I was confused why they were carrying the milk around, but Maloko Plus, that I, makes sense. The, 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 the canes. I was oh, confused oh, because okay. Clockwork Orange, they were... Oh, is that it? They just got back from that, that milk bar. Exactly. And so they're high on some shakes. Wasn't it supposed to be acid in the it, milk it was, or something There was like something this? in the milk yeah. that gave them the ultraviolence. And I so, fucking love that. so they're pumped, and I think it's kind of overrated. But they're like right. pumped, and then there's this white gang that pulls over. I guess they're getting ready to rumble. No, nothing sparks this fight. <laughs> they just. Well, I think they planned it. I think it was oh, like meet us at this time. That makes sense. Why else would they be drinking the Maloko Plus? Right. So they're all just fighting, and then Angel, he's just watching, contemplating. And again, know? he's got this look on his face that you're like. What what is going on with my town? Right, like I want this needs to stop. I need to stop the violence. He's seeing Kane just being driven into rib cages. Dude screaming out. It's it's like thirteen on thirteen. You know, right. it's intense. And as you expect, the black guys are kicking the shit out of the white guys until one white guy goes, "Hey, I have a gun. Yeah, I go. Let me go back to my car and get it." And he pulls out an Uzi. They and you notice, it. like it was like. It was, it was a limp dick Uzi because they had it on the like, set on semi automatic, so it was just like, bip, 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 yeah. bip. It never unloads on anybody. Yeah. That's what you want to see when you see an Uzi. Exactly. That's what you expect to see. Right. And he's just, just holding down the trigger, mowing people and, down. Well, well, he does just mow people down. He just, he just randomly starts shooting in the crowd. He hasn't been drinking the Maloko Plus. <laughs> he's been taking like some Adderall or something because he is so <laughs> super focused. He's fucking Robocop. He dude. is Robocop. And. This white gang, you said they were grunge. I thought they were more like Varsity Blues from the South just drove up to L.A. and are like, look at these black folk. So, get out of my country. <laughs> what? Uh, we're black. Where are we where oh supposed to go to? Oh, my God. So, yeah. He sprays. They're the MAGA gang. Very slowly sprays bullets into the crowd. Mixed. Uh, but it hits everybody he wanted to. Yeah. It hits every black guy. Every black guy. Racist bullets. <laughs> and we cut back to Angel. And a little slow <laughs> smile just creeps across yeah. his face. And he's yeah, like, oh, our man. our interpretation of the scene is like, I got to give me one of those Uzis. That's what we're thinking. We don't know. Yeah. But that's where I'm like, because I'm like, well, the, uh, upon my fucking third viewing of this goddamn movie. I know. Because, I'm on four and fucking Christ. But, but the first time, yes, we're thinking, is this guy the hero? I thought Olivier Gruner was the hero. What's going on? Is he going to be the sidekick that like help me help, help me <laughs> clean my neighborhood up? No, he's the villain. So, I'm sorry. Fuck this quarantine, because it made us watch this movie more than once. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So when all you fucking military cosplayers, 
Look, feel what we're going through. Watch this movie <laughs> three right. weeks in a row for fun. And then you'll know real pain. So we cut to our, our hero. <laughs> quotes. Hero. In a cemetery, driving up in his little Euro car. He's got another Euro car flying behind him, chasing him, and you see this broad hair Well, he, well he, first he goes to this. He, I, we learn this is his father's grave. Yeah, it's And he's like, so, old man, are you proud of me? Because he's getting right. I'm going to leave, go to university. I'm already an Olympic gold medal. I am a green bag. Well, that's what we'll learn in this movie. Jacques Montan, is the character's name, is an expert in everything. Everything. And everybody worships at the altar of Jacques. Oh, they bend their Including knees. this chick who's Jacquing Jacques. Apparently it's his girlfriend. I don't know. She's like a prostitute. She's some trashy broad. She's wearing a she's wearing a fur coat. Yeah. No shoes. No shoes. No clothes. Well, that's what we learn later. But first okay. we think she's clothes. Sorry, sorry to ruin So that. that's why the no shoes thing points guys like, what? what the fuck's going on? But she's also got a driver. Well, she, it's a taxi griff. Was it a taxi? Yes, it was a taxi. Oh, I didn't yeah. notice. I thought it was. Well, like that's a... what that's what prostitutes use to get around. <laughs> they use taxi. Well, they, have, they don't have a pimp. Maybe I think he was her pimp. How about that? Oh, yeah. oh man. Because cause she. Oh, and she's like fingernails on a chalk. But she. I was getting flashbacks to Austin Powers. That yeah. Scott. Oh. Because she's like Jack, Jack. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Fully vous couché avec moi. And he's just like, oh, I think I got rid of this broad. And he's just like, she comes up, and he's like, wait, wait you're not going to leave me. He's like, we've been through this. <laughs> Murray dropped his notes. What have they been we, through? What have they been we've through? We've through this. We're done, bitch. I'm moving to America. But what do I do with these? And then she opens her fur coat, and we see she's naked. And, I mean, <laughs> Jock has done it everywhere. He, he's done everything. He's but been what there, he hasn't done, done that. What he hasn't done it's fucked on his dad's grave. Yeah, he's fucked on a grave before, but, but never his father's yeah. grave. So he's just like, did mom have this kind of ass? Because <laughs> like, we're going to be pressing ham in your face. <laughs> and, and then he goes to Bone Town right on his fucking father's tombstone. So we get a we get a cl- cl- quick glimpse of like some tits and stuff, and then it zooms in, and then it zooms back out, and Jock's arriving in L.A., and he's still got that huge smirk on his face. Like, I fucked <laughs> all over. Yeah, he's two days late because he was banging the chick for two days on his dad's grave. Dude, he's- that's fucking nuts. He's like, that time I came on the tree because his dad had like a tree next to him, too. He's like, that was hilarious. That was just great. That was fun. Fuck you, Jack. You going to get back into talking about meat again, too, from like that Renegade episode? You kept talking about hot beef injections. <laughs> you're getting real weird with it. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> yeah, weird, I guess I'm going to have to go listen to that great Renegade episode. <laughs> it was know. great. So, Jack rolls up, cock of the walk, walks into the registration office at the, at the university. We yeah. don't know what fucking university it is. And there's like 20 people in front of the line. We get a later. Mr. Jacques Montand, you're late. He is doing the uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme thing. Baggy ass fucking like, like dress pants yeah. pulled up <laughs> above the old. Tucked in shirt. So, somewhere between nipples Real and. Real baggy leather button. jacket. Ugh, yeah. I didn't like that. God, that was Jean Claude's outfit. Yes. I, well, yeah, he's board. the poor man Jean Claude. Dress shoes. And he's just like, yes, well, I had to, excuse me, I had to bone somebody. And he's like, well, I don't approve of that, but go to the front of the line because yeah. you're Jacques Montaigne. <laughs> and so he go, he immediately just, he passes by 20 people that have been there for like an yeah. hour waiting to meet the dean. And they're all expressing it because the director was like, hey, make sure everybody complains <laughs> when his name gets called. And, and so they know he's waiting and Jack got picked. And Jacques just smirks at everybody as he walks by. Ugh. Walks into the dean's office, puts his fucking dress shoes right up on the table. Bowl of M and M's there. <laughs> grabs a hand. Renegade again, man. Oh, man. Grabs a handful. You remember that part? Yeah, I, I wanted to stress if you just you just joined us because you're in quarantine and you're just desperate to hear something, and you like our, your first episode was our blood sport, which is one of our greatest episodes in a long time. There's a lot of callbacks. So you need to listen to every fucking episode. You really will enjoy the. You, I mean, you're already enjoying them now, but you'll really enjoy every them. Every robot already listens to us. Yes. So might as everybody, well. Everybody. Every Russian board. bot that's going to vote for uh, um, <laughs> Hillary in the fall. Yes. So. Meets with the dean, eating the m and The dean. So we learn. We, we learn, but we don't really learn anything because. The, okay, yeah. the football team, apparently, in this fucking community college, got like steroids. They raped somebody. I don't know, but they got their. 
they're not allowed to play this year. Yeah. So they're desperate for a sport. We never really learned what sport is Olympic. <laughs> they're, He's, yeah, they're keeping it. The hidden. Olympic Committee has brought Jacques over. Yeah. And somehow that gets them in the engineering department. I don't know. But we never learned what sport really that Jacques is in. Well, we do. Upon my fucking hundredth viewing of this, <laughs> I, we do learn later on. But at this point, we, it's just a mysterious Olympic yeah. sport. He just looks like a fucking jock. Or not a jock. Excuse <laughs> he, me. He looks like a geek. He looks like he rever- rever- belongs in Revenge Jacques of the Jacques is a geek. Jacques is a geek. But he's just like, but you better look out for the head of the engineering department. Yeah. He'll tear your ass apart. He, and he's having a party later tonight that you must be at yeah. where he roasts everybody. It's basically a party set up just so the, the head of the department can burn it. every student. It, it, it is. He gets up there. He roasts everybody. He's, oh, my God. Why is everybody in this audience uh, uh, above the age of 45? And he's like, the dean's like, so I, don't lose your temper. Yeah. Please. We can't lose you, Jacques. We can't. We got. We need you. This school depends on you. Whatever your mystery sport is going to replace our football <laughs> program. Because everybody in America loves this sport. Yes. So he heads back out to that secretary lady, and she's got all kinds of pamphlets about uh, rooms to rent. And she's right. like, just one thing. Do not cross Fourth Street. Whatever you do, it's the student ghetto. She uses that phrase, student ghetto. Oh, did she? Yes. And she's like, whatever you do, do not pass Fourth Street. I don't want to see that beautiful face get hurt. And But she's like, you might have to because you're two days late because you're fucking a prostitute for the past. You probably went on like a heroin bender. They were just fucking chasing the dragon. That might have been it, yeah. And he's just like, don't worry. I can handle it. I can handle myself. Thanks for the mops. <laughs> And then we get a nice fucking, I've never seen this before, a looking for an apartment montage. That's true. It's because we don't watch, like, uh, uh, the comedies. I think yeah. in the comedies. Is that a staple a, of comedies? I think I think it can be. like the, the. I think, you know what? That's a staple of Revenge of the Nerds. I think they did have a. They did. Yes. Yeah. So, a comedy. So, he's looking around. For some reason, nobody has a room, but they all have their signs that say to let in the Everybody windows. Everybody is fucking teasing the shit out of Jock. <laughs> right. This is kind of probably them getting back at him a little bit, like. Close down my football team, will you? They blame him for that. <laughs> That's but. it. Uh, so, of course, after five-minute montage of him not being able to figure out where to stay, he looks. He looks up. He's and like, he sees I, Fourth Street. I got to cross it. He's on. He's on the fucking West Side Fourth Street. Yeah, and he looks back, and we see like happy kids playing. <laughs> yes. You know. It, it, you know, it looks like a beach today during yeah. the quarantine. Everyone's just enjoying the fuck out of themselves. Exactly. And they should be inside. And the other side, it's like a scene from Escape from the Bronx. <laughs> if you there's see, trash if you, fires. If, there's literally trash, yeah. he, and he's firing on somebody. <laughs> and there's like abandoned cars. It's ridiculous. There's like abandoned cars. This guy playing drums on an abandoned uh, yeah, car. Yeah, he's like tapping on the engine, and it's making the greatest it's, noise it's ever. Every race of stereotype you could think of. Like these people are scum, but they love life too, oh. and they're playing music. And he walks right up to the band, and he's like doing a little jig just to like be like, I fit in here. I don't look like you, but I fit in here. And then we, uh, he hears a ruckus, and he looks right. across the street, and there's a bunch of kids chasing one well, kid. Well, no, it's one kid, and then there's a midget Suicidal Tendencies cover band. <laughs> okay. Because we got a guy who looks like Rocky with a pirate's cap. We yeah. got a little Mike Muir with the fucking bandana across his eyes. Yeah, okay, okay. And they're like, I guess this kid doesn't like, like Suicidal Tendencies, so they're angry. We told you to get us Pepsi! And he's running for his life, and Jacques immediately PTSDs. Oh, my God. And has this flashback to his childhood in the French ghettos. Oh, my God. The mean canals of <laughs> uh, France. Like, that's what I love about these movies because they don't take the time. We don't have time to get to know people or their yeah. culture. So we just go, what's the, like, the most <laughs> racist thing? So, like, everybody in France has, like, a beret on, like, yep. a striped shirt. Yep. And one guy's got mime makeup on. <laughs> And they're doing the exact same thing that to Jacques that, the, that Suicidal is doing to this kid. The kid's hiding in a trunk of a abandoned car. Yeah. And they're beating on the trunk. So he's, it's making a great noise, by the way. Again, right. all they, the they have these, Hispanic Those cars. Hispanic people, great do, do, rhythm. Do, 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 they're rhythmic do, do, people. Do, do. <laughs> they're doing samba and shit while they're doing it. They're like, oh. <laughs> Motherfucker, we'll sit out here and fucking dance all night. <laughs> and so he's got to get involved because he's had this actually same thing happen. Who would have thought? You think you're, if you, someone was beating on a, you in a trunk, you think I'm the only one who's ever experienced that. So we're, we're definitely expecting Jack to go across the street and fucking roundhouse a couple midgets, right. right? No. He does the adult thing. He lifts the trunk 
Hey, I was once just like you when I was a boy. You're all the very same age. And this kid <laughs> looks up at him, spits on his shoe, and he says, Get fucked, mister, and just takes off yeah, running. Yeah, like, you want a fucking medal or something? Yeah. Grabs his dick and runs well, off. He flipped him off, too. And oh, then damn. Jock chooses to be the bigger man. He's like, oh, kids. kids. And then he's like, hey, you kids that were going to beat him up. Come here. Yeah, the suicidal tendencies. Come back here. And Come they're like, here. fuck you, too. Like, I can't read, asshole. He's a kid. He <laughs> says that. He's like, do you know where this is? I can't fucking read. <laughs> I'm in a fucking ghetto. And he takes off. And he grabs one kid with yeah. a fucking sweetest ass fucking mullet. He did have really cool hair, yeah. He's going for that Sioux Falls. But he has, to, he has to flash a little green. Apparently, he, he's been saving for years. That's uh, Jacques' excuse. But he's unlimited funds, he, well, which makes yeah. me think he's a pimp. You know. Oh, okay. Because he's always flashing green. He he flashes. He does, he does buy himself he flashes, a fancy car later on. Yes. Well, I think the guy just gives it to him. Yeah. But he flat. It's not so fancy. <laughs> okay. he, he flashes like ten dollar bill. And kids' eyes light up. He's never seen a ten dollar bill in his life. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, you know where this is? This is the kids' directions. Yeah, I know where that is. It's that big house. You can't miss it. No directions at all, but somehow Jacques... The, figured- ca- the camera doesn't even help us out like, oh, yeah, it's just right there within, you know, eyesight. No. He walks like another 4, 10, 20 blocks. Right. And then he's walking And up. you do it in dress shoes. That's rough. You get that some, you're getting rough. some blisters, That's true. Dude. Very true. Yeah. And he's walking up, and he's noticing the neighborhood, and it's like, oh, that's not that bad. It really right. isn't. Yeah, he's, well, he's grown up in, in the ghetto himself. Yeah, he sees, like, a nice Vietnam vet. He's got his Blue Lives Matter uh, flag <laughs> wave. <laughs> I, we're going to get into I love Frank is his name. I love Frank. Frank, Frank is a fucking awesome character. No, he, I love because you know what I love about him? And I don't know. It's possible he was really a handy. He was a uh, paraplegic. Okay. Because that's what I love about If he's not, he's an actor. He killed what what I love is you notice his feet are always like tangled up like yeah. they're never like like yeah. like his he's, he's playing that my, my legs are useless like card hard. I imagine for the three months he was on set for this movie, he kept his shoes tied together, his like <laughs> yeah. feet tied together, yeah. so, just so straight he method. Oh, he was so. Or good. he's really handicapped. I have no idea. No, That's how you, good he was. You were right. And so Jock is walking by, and uh, Frank's house is like the first uh, house on the way. So we notice his Frank, and they. He's like, oh, what's this guy doing over here? This is the wrong part of town. But they nod, you yeah. know, kind of like, All Game right. knows game. All right. Uh, and then Jock walks past a, a little picket fence, and then he sees, um, wow, two buses? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, this is where we meet our comic relief characters. We, <laughs> we don't even remember their names. We're just going to call them Alberto and Ernesto <laughs> because they're Hispanic Bert and Ernie, basically. <laughs> they they live, live in a fucking <laughs> bus. It's like it's Partridge together. Family. It's a school bus. Yeah. Partridge Family style. They've made like little canopies out front that they got <laughs> clothes hanging. Yeah, they from. just, I don't know, they just shit in a bucket. Like, I don't know what's going on. They have no fucking running water. I have no they idea. They live in a bus by the river. Maybe they started the manning movement all the way back. In I don't know. But I they, know. yeah, they like go fresh meat homes. So we get straight out of central casting. If you're like a white person who's never met a Hispanic person, you're like, what would a Hispanic gang member <laughs> look like? All right. Hairnet. Tattoo tear. Yep. Flannel shirt with only the top button. Top button. I'm not Long shorts. <laughs> Knee socks. I'm not a fan of this, but uh, I think people would get if I said this. This is like Michael Scott casting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got that. Yeah. From The Office. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't really watch it. Yeah. And I didn't either, but I got that. So I think okay. people watch okay. it will get it. I, okay. It's just in the air enough where it's like you get 90% of the jokes. Yeah. People don't shut up about that shit. Right. And so, yeah, they start fucking with our boy. He's trying to go up. He's knocking on the door. Like, you don't want to go there, Holmes. You don't want to go there. Yeah. They're, like, up on the stoop with him, and they're just like, you'd have to knock a little harder because the old lady in there is a little hard of hearing, but you don't want to stay here. And they've still got the room for rent sign out. Right. And then so we meet Grandma. I don't know Grandma Ma. I don't know what her fucking name was, but. Let's call her Mia. Okay. <laughs> okay. Grandma Mia. And she's like, can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a, I am from the university, and I am looking for a room to rent. And while they're talking, I think Maria shows yeah, up. Yeah, Maria, she, the she's... The daughter-in-law of Mia, is that what you're going to call Mia, her? Mia, yeah. Mia, okay. She's the daughter-in-law of Mia. 
And she's like, oh, you don't. He's like, oh, we. I, I told the university to take us off the list. No. You do not. This this fucking neighborhood is a mess. You do not want to be here. Yeah. And he's like, please, this just let me stay a few days until I find some place. And he starts flashing that. <laughs> like she's welcomed them inside, right. so she, he's not in front of Alberto and Ernesto yeah. showing off. Uh, you know this this wad of cash he's carrying right. around on yeah. him. So he's like, but I've got all this American dollars. Uh, Maybe I could stay for just like a day. Her eyes just light up, and she says that, that fucking the Benjamins, and she's like, "Oh, you can stay a day, uh, okay." Uh, and, and he's carrying like uh, another like suit with them, and she's like, "Well, I'll get you your room ready up here. Why don't you let Mama uh, Mia take your <laughs> Mama Mia? <laughs> Why don't?" You... <laughs> I, you're I'm the sorry, one who came I up with the name. I love how you come up with the name and then you forget it. I didn't it. even mean to do that. Mama Mia, why don't you let Mama Mia take your pants? <laughs> take your inseam and check your inseam. And he's like, I don't know what that means. Oh, my God. There's no language barrier with that. <laughs> so, so uh, okay, you saw this, too. I saw a tension here. Well, there, was te- there was sexual tension. All, everyone <laughs> wants to fuck Jock through this entire movie, I, but the fucking head of the Department of Engineering. Yeah. Who's the true hero of this story. So, uh, uh, Jock gets set up in his room, and we cut to the night. Mama Mia's got his pants all ready for him. He's looking real good, right up to the nipples again, <laughs> yeah. as always. I don't remember if he put a jacket on. Yes, know. he did. Jacket. He had a suit on because okay. this is a this is a formal party. He's got to yeah. look. He's got to impress the, the head of the Department of Engineering. Mama Mia, of course, she goes her thumb and cleans off right. his cheek a little bit. Like, oh, you're looking so good. How she's like Italian now? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess no, you're, you're I calling her Mama Mia, so I guess it maybe you think she's Italian. <laughs> she goes, oh, she goes, El Wapo. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Yeah. But that's what she says. It says that means huge. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he goes to the she party. The she knows. Before we, for, see, he's just he's mingling. We see the dean come no, not the dean, the head of the department comes in and he's just he's Don Rickling the fuck out of everybody. He's like, Boom! So, boom! Your dad wishes you were fucking <laughs> uh, like you weren't born, and you know he's just like burning everybody. He's got the cigar. He's just kind of putting it, ashing on people's shoes and clothes and shit in their drinks. He's just he's calling everybody a hockey puck. He's oh just like everyone god. is just like, oh my god! They're just, and they have to take it. Oh, you skipped over Alberto Ernesto holding up Jock on the way to the party. Oh right, yeah. And, out of left field, Jock pulls out a switchblade <laughs> and says, back the fuck <laughs> up. And they back up, and then he gets to the park. Right. Yeah. So he's like, when in Rome, get a switchblade. Yeah, apparently. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, the proof, he's like, he's like, this guy, is a, this, this is the daughter of a huge donor. You want to be nice to her? And she comes up. He's like, oh, I remember your father. I remember he wanted a boy. He yeah. must be very uh, disappointed. Toots, by the way, you're not hiding that ass in that dress. It's all over the place. It's a mess. A mess. <laughs> he's just fucking roasting the shit out of uh. everybody. And then he's like. Where's that jock hole, jock? Someday I'm going to own a TV station and I'm going to fucking own the jock hole. So I meet jock and he's like, I'm on to you, buddy. He's the only person who's on to the charade that is Jacques Montaigne. Yeah, you think your athletics are going to get you, coach you through my class? Ain't going to happen. And then Jacques is always smirks. Oh, really? We'll see. And then this like 50-year-old woman who's a student <laughs> She's like, it looks like fucking Hillary Clinton. She's like, yeah, that's a good call. She comes up to him. She's like, oh yeah, oh my god, Jacques. Uh. He's he like, really roasted your ass. And he's like, mm, I've been roasted by better. <laughs> and she's like, well, you know, this is what I do to. And she just really admits she's a whore. She's like, anybody, this is what, this is my move. I need to be walked home. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'll fill you in on all the dirt and the gossip going on in the engineering. I'm sure there's a lot of dirt going on in the engineering department of a community college. Mm-hmm. But that's her line she uses. So he's like, eh, whatever. He's like, I fucked worse. You know, I fucked the chicken up. My dad's fucking <laughs> grave. So I think I can fuck Hillary Clinton. It's it's pretty great because you mentioned she's 50 and she's still living in student housing, which is yeah. what we're about to find out. She's living yeah. with, like, the the Revenge of the Nerds crew, all 19, 20-year-olds. Well, no, everybody's fucking 50. This is like a community college where people are they obviously lost their <laughs> jobs. They're going back to learn a new trade. Because but they're taking up the old college tradition of just getting drunk <laughs> on the lawn. Well, hey, when in Rome. Like, when once in Rome. Again. <laughs> so, they, like, Blues Hammer is playing some, like, corny-ass white blues band. Yeah. On the way back home, they see her apartment 
apartment building, and there's the, a frat party going just on. Big frat party happening on the front lawn. Very respectful. A lot of consent forms. No spiking of drinks. And they're playing the fucking Bob Seger's greatest hits. Catman Blues. And fucking everyone's loving it, but Angel and his gang. Oh, they roll up two cars deep, and, you know, Angel, uh, he doesn't drive. I believe no. his lady drives. Yes. I then, actually thought she was Angel, but no, he uh, yeah, is Angel. I was thinking the same she's thing. She's Angela. She's... <laughs> and, yeah, so she's she's the driver. That's her role in the gang. And he's just flashing that. He just got this Uzi off camera. We don't know, but he's just flashing it. It looked, it didn't even look, it looked like a fucking 60s Star Trek phaser. It was like the most retarded-looking gun. <laughs> It was. And it's probably it was probably like some cap gun they got at Toys R Us. But he's just flashing it. It's like fuck you, man, fuck you. He's just telling everybody to fuck off. Yeah, and the the gang hops out of the car and they're like not really doing much. They're just like, Your music is shit. Well, and true. one guy takes offense and he's like, Look, look, Bob Seeker's actually a pretty good band. Maybe if you just chill out and listen a, a little you bit. You don't know the silver bullet man? Why don't you have a couple of drinks and hang out with us? We got the silver cans, We're you know. Playing the pong. We got we got some pong here. We got Atari Pong over there, if you would I like. I was thinking beer Pong. I, I know. But, they have both. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I know. They, they're they digital in college. Why would you be angry with that? I think I'd be like, yeah, I'd like to partake. But yeah, this fucking gang member, he's just like, you have, maybe it was because he had more stuff. Keeping up. Well, with we also got to point situation. out, this is like the nerdiest, most inept gang in L.A. So they really are. That's probably why they're fucking with these nerdy squares, because the only people they can intimidate. That's a good point. Because we'll learn point. later, there's... There's somebody yeah. they want really badly in the gang, which... Ugh. So they take offense to the Pong offer, the gang member, and he fucking uppercuts this kid, and it's a pretty weak punch. Maybe, again, the, a testament to the strength of this Everybody, gang. Everybody, all the... I don't... I, I can't... I'm, I'm, I'm offending the, the phrase stunt stunt worker when I say these people, because the fighting is so horrible in this it, one. I mean, obviously, Gruner must have some background, but all the other guys in the cast have no background because the fighting is so awful. It, it's really bad. So, like, Olivia, Jacques, he's like, I haven't beaten up, up anybody up in a couple of days. So I'm going to take care of he, He's of trying to be cool. He's like, hey, everybody, why don't we get back in our car and drive away, and we'll just listen to Bob Seger, and you can listen to whatever you want. No. They have to get fresh with him. Because right. Angel and Ernesto are not here. No. Well, they might be. I don't fucking I, know. I don't think they were here. They're they're cleaning their bus. Or you know what? Like they're that. waiting for him on his way back home. You're right. Yeah. So this is a different gang. But they <laughs> this are is Angel's connected, gang. But they yeah. are somewhat yeah. connected. Angel, uh, Alberto, and uh, Ernesto are connected yes. to Angel's gang. Yes. Sorry. There's a lot of gangs yeah, going on here. A lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts. So... Jock has This is just, the other half of the gang, because there's only like 20 people in this entire yeah. gang. Jock is meeting this other part of the gang who has not learned of him, and uh, so they decide to get fresh with them, and Jock tippy-taps tippy the fuck out yeah, of him. Yeah, he just tippy-taps. And what's Angel doing the whole time? He's like pointing his gun and just like, stop it. And looking scared. Stop it. Stop it. Because this guy's also like 40 years old. Like Everybody's like 40 in this movie. Yeah. It's rough looking. <laughs> Even the kid, Martin, I think he's 40. And uh, so he, he, they break it up. I don't know, like, the cops come. I don't fucking remember. No, but. they just get back in their car and they drive away because Jock beat the shit out okay. of them. Yeah. And then well, I, I mean, you got to think. Like, I have... I have to... I hate always... I hate ever going against Eric Sloan. But, yes, tippy taps are bitch hits, but it's pretty emasculating if someone paintbrushes you with some tippy tap kicks. Yeah. Like... <laughs> like bitch slaps you with them. They wouldn't hurt, but they would hurt your soul. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, they get in there and they take it's, off. It's like uh, being a little brother myself when your older brother like holds you at arm's reach and you can't touch him and he's just overpowering you. It's that. It's that kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's humiliating. So yeah, I, I think all the other like uh, 50 year old frat members, they like, yeah, get out of here. You're done. And so they they drive away. Jock leaves. Uh, forty year old Janet. Let's call her. Yeah. Does she have a name? <laughs> Janet. Who cares? Yeah. We're we're naming is it, everybody. Is it Karen. Is that the name we give boring? That's the, the boring white woman name. Karen? She wasn't. She wasn't obnoxious. No, she I wasn't. Wanted, I wanted to say we, she's well, a we didn't Karen. get enough time to get to know her. So. Yeah. She, she she wants. She likes Jock. So she can't be <laughs> that good a person. Uh, 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 I I would I would give her Janet. Okay, Janet. Damn it, Janet. Damn it, Janet. So, was it Janice the last episode? Janice was. A lot of Janice. Jans. A lot of Jans. Yeah. They, were, they were trying to play off Bloodsport. 
So, uh, Janet's like, wow, it's been a pretty crazy night, and the one kid got punched in the face, so she's like, I'm going to make sure he's okay. She's probably going to sleep with him. Uh, she, she, and- she's just, she looked at it, and she's like, I can't. That shit's Jock is too fast for me. I can't handle that shit. So I'll just be, I got I got a bad hip. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll just go to my boring, you know, boyfriend. Yeah. So That probably was her boyfriend, but she was still gonna maybe, plan on fucking ooh, Jock. Maybe. So uh Jock heads back home and yeah, of course he's yeah. walking and yeah. you get that nice transition from the good side, the college side of town where everyone's partying on the lawn to Fort Hell Street. On Earth. Yeah. And uh, you know what? He gets in front. I think of- that's that's my favorite Bob Seger song. Down on Fourth <laughs> Street, down, down, man, down, I didn't down, know that Fourth uh, four Street Bob Seger. We're so good at this. So we get so, back in front of yeah. Frank's house, and they're across the street from Frank's house. And Frank's this, just sitting there drinking, drinking like some Jim Beam. I yeah, think. Jim Beam. And as you would if you're a crippled PTSD riddled. Well, that's veteran. all I do in quarantine now. I I barely drank. Quarantine hits, yeah. I'm drinking every day. Now. Yeah, I know, because I got your notes for our Tippy Tap episode coming up, Jesus and I was like, what, did he watch the fucking same thing I watched? It, it took me an hour to fix those notes. It killed me. That yeah. episode killed me. Yeah, well, look for that. I, that actually might come out first, but yeah. But anyway, yeah, so he's walking home, and then, and then this is what I think. Is it a horror movie? Because the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, just comes out of the bushes. <laughs> this guy looked like Richard Ramirez. was creeping me out. And Ernesto and Alberto should pop out of the bushes. Yeah. And they they're like start fucking with and then like he's like, God damn it, more fighting. I'm yeah. just so we get this nice comic because this as we say, Ernesto and Alberto are the comic, comic relief creators. So we get a com- comic fight where they go behind some bushes and then we see like five guys getting knocked out and they get back in and the yeah. bushes are shaking. But Jock has slipped out of the bushes. And they're beating each other up, even though it's like the most brightly lit scene. Yeah. And Jock looks across the street. Got his shirt, got torn. Yeah. He's pissed off. He looks across the street to Frank, who's holding his bottle. He's pouring more into his coffee mug. And Frank nods at Jock, and Jock nods at Frank, and then he raises the mug. Mm. So good. Salutes him. So Jock gets back to his room. He's pissed off because his brand new dress shirt got ripped, much like my fucking Buffalo Bill starter jacket. And (laughs) he immediately has another flashback. This is the 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 ripped shirt just takes him back to when he was in school and his teacher's like, You're a loser, you're always gonna be a loser, Jacques Martin. Poems Poems the kid thinks himself a poet. Sorry, that's uh Pink Floyd. Okay. I don't know why it reminded me of that. It just did. But she's just berating him and he's like, I'll show you I'll fuck to my girlfriend on your grave too. Oh shit. <laughs> And then he goes to sleep, finally gets to sleep, but then he's woken up by this ruckus outside. Oh, my God. And he hits the window, and he sees that there's this kid. It's a very young kid, geeky as all fuck. He's Fucking wearing a sweater. Denim on denim on denim. Oh, he was wearing denim. I thought he was wearing a sweater. He did have a sweater, and he had a denim jacket over it. He had the sweater. He had the collared shirt, so the collar was popping out. And then he had a fucking denim jacket. Where was this kid at? It was three in the morning. It was he's <laughs> he's fifteen years old. It's, he's fifteen. It's three <laughs> in the morning. It's Los Angeles in the summertime. He did have some fresh white Reeboks. He did. No, oh. it's not in the summertime because it's school time. It'd Griff. be fall, but it'd yes. still be hot there. Yes, it would be. And he's wearing four layers. <laughs> Okay. Well, it'd be hot for us because we're from a colder climate. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you get used to it. So he's running around the house. He runs. Does he? He runs into. Does he run into Jacques' room? Like he, window? No, he pops in his mom's window and he grabs a shotgun. Yeah, he goes he, through the shotgun in the in the, in the corner. And yeah. Jacques comes flying down the how staircase. Does, how does like this family have more guns than the gang has? I know <laughs> this whole. Spoiler alert! There's one gun in this whole gang of thugs. <laughs> And they just like hey, share it, and they, sh- <laughs> and well, I guess you know, like they say, uh, I guess the saying goes like the one-eyed man and the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is yeah, king, yeah, and the yeah. kingdom of the weaponless, the one gun, one armed man is king. Maybe, maybe Angel at the beginning of the movie didn't have control over the gang, got the gun, got the control. I think he did. I think you're right. Because we don't know what time elapsed. That's probably why he was somber. Because he's like, "How can I get control?" Like we're thinking, he's worried about his. his he his was probably living on the bus with Alberto and probably. Ernesto. Probably, and then he made his move. He made his move. He bought a gun. He's like an American, like a proud American. He's an entrepreneurial spirit. That would make sense. He bootstraps, motherfucker. Exactly. You know. So, 
fucking, you know, Jacques, he just thinks all Mexicans are gang members. So he had, he beats the shit out of fucking Martin. Yeah, he grabs because Martin's got this gun and he's walking towards the front door. And so Jacques fucking grabs the gun, hits him in the face with it, kicks him. This is like, I mean, Jacques is 6'5", good 220 pounds of muscle. And he? he looked short I, I to know. me. I have I no know. fucking I'm building it up, Murray. Yeah. Don't knock my towers down. So, <laughs> so yeah. And then Maria finally wakes up, and she's like, no. That's my son, Martin. And we learn. I, I don't know why, because Martin is, is almost as big a drip as Jacques is. This gang is desperate to get Martin to join their gang. That's how pathetic they are. What the fuck? So that's why they're harassing Martine. And so we get another fucking flashback. Yeah. And we see Martine. I think Maria explains that Martine's dad died or something. Why did he have this flashback (laughs) otherwise? (laughs) Because it doesn't make sense to have it. But a flashback is him murdering a person. There's somebody dead on the ground that Jacques had just killed. And his dad's like, he had it coming. Come on, run. And they run. And That's what that flashback was? Yes. This movie is so boring, like that Knight Rider episode. I just phased out for that he's, part. No, he's standing over a fucking body. You're he's like, right. He's like, you motherfucker. And then this gang with berets starts chasing him, the mime gang. Yeah. <laughs> and he jumps the fence, and his dad's too out of shape. He's got the COVID. He can't, you know, he's breathing. <laughs> and so the gang. I need my ventilator. He's like, he's like, where's my inhaler? And the gang kills his dad. Yeah, and it's a barred fence, so Jock is just like watching it. And like, uh, Mar- uh, Jock is like, I will avenge you by fucking on your grave. <laughs> That's probably what his dad says. He's like, whatever you do, fuck on my grave. Uh, and he dies. Oh my god! Spare and he's like, seed on my stove. So next morning. Jacques wakes up. He's got the fucking pants up to the nips. And Maria's like, you can't stay here. <laughs> I want to point yeah, out, yeah. the whole point of Jacques being here is going to school. He goes to school for five minutes total in this movie. Five fucking minutes. <laughs> he goes like two times out of the five days we see here. He's like, oh, yes, I've got to go to class. And he does, My education he is important. For five minutes. <laughs> and then walks out. <laughs> but <laughs> so... He te- yeah, he's like, I never knew this was so crazy. They warned me about 4th Street, but this is really crazy. She's like, yeah, these kids, these, they want my son in this gang. I don't know why. He's a nerd. <laughs> he's he a saw him. He's a dweeb. Trip, yeah. He saw those big white fucking Reeboks he's wearing. He <sighs> sucks. And Jock, Jock is like, I can't be near this much dweeb. So I don't remember how it works out, but they're on the fence about if he's going to return or not. Well, um, he Jock is like, I'm going to escort you to work because this yeah. is too dangerous. Yeah. And they walk down. He meets Frank. Finally meets Frank face to face. Yep. And while that's going on, the gang, they want fucking Martine, man. He's fresh fish, man. And they're like, they want to fry him. So uh, it's actually um, Marta. Yeah, Maria. She she actually walks uh, through. Frank's got like uh, an alley passage. Yeah, they're ready to murder her some. She's like, I got to get to work. Yeah. You know, so she's like, I was trying to allude that she missed this whole thing happen. But yeah, you're right. She did kind of glance at it. She's like, "Uh, well, Angel shows up in that fly. Not so fly convertible. And like he's got his Uzi. They're ready. They're like they're doing the art of the deal. This is the hard sell. Uh, Yeah, they're like kicking doors down. And Martine, he knows where that gun's at, so he's got he, he's getting it loaded back. Mama Mia, she's all flustered. She faints. She falls. Oh, she man. can't get up. She hits her head. She's got a boiling pot of uh, tomatoes going, and she pulls it on herself. So she's scalding hot, you know, just in those tomatoes. <laughs> and Martin's like, "Oh God, I, I'll take care of this." So he goes <laughs> back. He's like, "You sit in your chair, Gripple. I'll handle this." So he runs off, and then we get, the, like you said, like I alluded to earlier, these awful fights because none of the, the Mexican actors, I don't think they're stuntmen. They're just reg- they're just extras, and they're awful. Yeah. I mean, you got interesting uh, development to this fight because you got people already in the house making uh, Mamma Mia faint, pull the tomatoes down. They're like, they get Martin, Martin, excuse me. They pin him to a table, and they're just punching him in the face, just like it was straight. Her, you wrote this down. Is Grandma's name really Abuela? Abuela. It, Abuela. That's Spanish okay. for Grandma. Okay, I don't fucking know. Because <laughs> I, I, I didn't know her name, so I just okay. wrote Abuela. Um, but yeah, and then she does got, not have our attack graph. Like you say, you know, she faints. She faints? 
She's a heart later. Okay. Spoiler alert. Okay. So she faints. She right out of fucking a great Lifeline commercial. Perfect fall. Yeah, it doesn't have life alert. Though, it's probably because, I, I, I. I'm almost positive it was a male stunt man in drag who just fell over because you don't see the face. And then, yeah, like you said, and then fucking Frank, he just has a fucking nervous breakdown and starts pummeling his legs. He's like, Damn you, useless legs and my Dude. non-working penis! And he's just like stabbing <laughs> his legs with a butter knife. And he's just he's been up for like twenty four hours straight just drinking Jack. So. <laughs> yeah. So he's being a little emotional. Yeah, just a little bit. And so, yeah. So we get the long-ass fight scene. They're trying to get into this. It's like fucking scene from Night of the Living Dead. They're trying to get in this house. you got Jock working around the perimeter slowly, and he's just, like, tapping people on the shoulder. Are you who? The (laughs) the first guy, who was, like, a fucking 40-year-old, like, fat guy, he pummels the shit out of this guy. He punches him in the kidney, like, 20 times. Yeah, he, he is. Oh, no, no holds barred. <laughs> no holds barred. Uh, and we get c- cuts, dual cuts. Well, I should say tr- three different cuts because we get Martin getting his face pummeled in by two different dudes. Then you get <laughs> yeah. Angel running around the house with his Uzi, and he's just like dipping, <laughs> dodging, pointing. He's not shooting. He looks scared as fuck. He looks terrified. <laughs> and then you have Jock. Fucking cat with a mouse, just fucking intestines pulled out. The lawn is just littered with fucking human organs and blood, and yeah. it's disgusting. And then finally, Martin or uh, Jock gets into the house, frees Martin. He's like, "You go over to Frank's and take off and run." So that's what Martin does, and apparently, right. the kid's a sprinter because he fucking. Yeah. We he gets have away. the world's. I think this, they broke a record. This is the longest, boringest foot chase in Jesus cinema Christ. history. The only thing that could have made this worse <laughs> if you, you heard, and then that fucking camera angle uh, by by the side of the car, like that would have made it a little worse. So yeah, so Martinez runs for his life, and he's not paying attention where he's going, and he should because he walk, walk, he runs right into Watts, which is where the black people live. Yes, and you don't go to where the black people live if you well, ain't black. This also happens to be where Jock meets up. Yeah, with Jock him. catches up to him after he, he murders everybody, and. Uh, Martin, of course, is a little out of breath, but Jock is just completely composed, not even sweating. He's like, excuse me, brother, homeboy. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? This is what? <laughs> We're going to get killed. They just walk right through. Well, what happens is Angel shows up in his fucking convertible, and apparently they didn't recognize it was Watts. Well, I think they did, and they're in trouble because the Kane gang ain't having that. So, like, they're like, okay. White guy, whatever. This is our true enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So they start attacking the convertible yeah. with their canes, are beating on them. Get out of here. And then, Angel is still just like kind of pointing. Just, he hasn't gotten the bullets yet. He just has the gun. <laughs> He's working on the bullets. Because in America, it is so hard to get a gun and bullets. Yes. Especially in L.A. Especially in L.A. Especially if you're in a gang in L.A. It's hard to get a gun. He does have that because we do so many like background checks here in America. Yeah. If you're in a gang, you're not getting a gun. It's true. That's why we have so many 2A uh, defenders out there because right. like we need to give these gang members gang. Right. Uh, I actually think that's what they were doing in Lansing the other day. It was, it was about gangbangers' the right to an, get guns. There's not enough minorities with guns. We need right. more. That's, that's, their, that's the battle cry of every militia guy. Yeah, not the, enough minorities with guns. <laughs> the, the Punisher people and the black, yeah. Blue Lives Matter people, they definitely yes. want more more guns. So like, and so the, the Mexicans take off, and then the guy's like, do you want me to fuck that white boy up? Yeah. No, nah, man. Anybody who wears pants that high is cool <laughs> in my book. Let them go. They get a free pass. <laughs> And so they walk to the nearest party store. That's the, that's what we call them in Michigan. Yeah, that's Michigan. Thing, it's yeah. a convenience store for yeah. you non-Michiganders. Yeah. And yeah. I love it. Fucking Jacques. This starts opening food up, like eating it. And I, he's not paying for it. You see, this movie taught me a terrible lesson because when I went to Europe, I'm going to play like I've watched this movie before. <laughs> when I went to Europe, that's what I did when I went to convenience stores. I just started <laughs> opening <laughs> shit, eating shit, this drinking shit. what you shit. do, right? Yeah. He's got a fucking Snapple. He's just snapping into it. It's called a uh, Snipple over there. Oh, Snipple? Yeah. And Mr. Hooper, who's running, is like, you kids, uh, do what you want. Yeah, he was so cool about it. You want some scratchies, maybe some cigarettes, kid? And then uh, Jacques finally confronts Martin. He's like, why are you such a bitch? And he's just like, I don't want to be in a gang. What? 
You don't want to be in a gang? I thought every kid wanted to be in a gang. <laughs> this is this is where this is the this theme is, of this movie is mixed messages yeah, because he is flabbergasted that my teen does not want to be in a gang. Maybe maybe Jock was in a gang and he, that's why he course, killed yes, that guy. He was in a gang. He wasn't. Okay. But he's haunted by it. So why is he like pushing this kid into a yeah. gang? He's like, it's the coolest. He should be one of the ex gang members. I killed members five people like, by the time I was your age. What's wrong with you? Why are you such a fag? Maybe that's why he went into the convenience store and started eating all the shit because that was what he did in his gang life. And Martin's like, well, I don't want it. I want to be better than that. And he's like, fuck you then. He's like, Nobody talks shit to me. And then the fucking Mr. Hooper's like, Settle down now. And so Jock jo- jo- fucking crushes a yoo which is the most <laughs> disgusting beverage ever made by man. Yeah, Red Bull's pretty up there. Oh, no, Red Bulls are delicious. No, but, Red Bull is like cough syrup. Fuck Red Bulls. It's, it's wonderful. Go fuck yourself. I haven't had one in years. Garbage. I miss them. Uh, so Jock finishes off that yoo and chugs a Red Bull just for good measure. And he turns to Martine and he's like, you are right. I am sorry I lost my cool. I'm going to eat one of these Slim Jims and really snap into it. And then we need to hide you. This gang can't find you. Why can't the gang can't? Motives in this movie make no sense. Why like, do they want this little drip? You. This kid sucks. Yeah. Maybe they want a book nerd in the gang. So this is, you know, remember, this is like 19. 19- Maybe they want him to cook meth. I don't know. And so this is 93, so we still have pay phones. Yep. So he goes to the pay phone, opens, does, lets his fingers do the walk-in. He's like, I wonder if he's still here. This is where we were introduced to Henry Lee, friend of Jacques. He's got a gym, a dojo. Yeah, they just he, pop right into there. Right there. Well, the first thing we see is a fucking altar to Jacques. There's a fucking giant frame. This guy, Henry Lee, this is his dojo. Yet, so you figure you'd want to, like, Advertise yourself. Like, you'd have a picture of yourself in your fucking karate gi with championship. No, he has a picture of Jacques, like a giant yeah. poster of Jacques with his fucking, like, kickboxing belts like he won. And Lee, uh, also in this movie, never has his shirt off. Jacques constantly. <laughs> he even gets a John claude butt Lee, shot Well, this there. is the thing. This is where you learn. The true hero of this movie is Henry Lee. He's the only decent person in this entire fucking movie. Henry Lee is a fucking treasure in this did world. Did you recognize him? Because he's been in other shit. Oh, shit. I think I did, but I... He I, was... You should remember. He was one of David Lopin's hen, main henchmen, Rain, in Big Trouble in Little China. Yes, that... Okay. I knew it. I knew it. So, so he's like, Jacques! And he's like, just embrace. His wife is like, oh, fuck you. His wife comes out and she's just like, you're still hanging real low to the ground there, my friend. Oh, God, it's good to see you. And he's like, yeah, I'll fuck you later. Where is your fucking no good husband? Oh, he's training his students. Oh, come on. I'll show him. Like, Jacques is training. And then just walk in. I swear this was the same dojo they had in... Um no retreat, no surrender. It looked way too familiar. It probably was. We also need to point out that this place, because this comes up later and is another testament to how much of a piece of shit Jock is. <laughs> the, his dojo is in kind of like a ghetto. It's like a yeah. Chinatown, but it, it's like it's a whole rundown strip, like street. Right. It's and in then, a strip mall. Yeah. And, and it's nothing. But, yeah, Jacques walks in. Henry's eyes light up because cause Jacques only sees his friends when he needs something from them. So yeah. he's been in L.A., doesn't look up Henry at all, doesn't even know if fucking if Henry's, where Henry lives. Yeah, you think he would have been so fucking excited, <laughs> maybe called ahead and been yeah. like, Henry and me, I'm going back to that. But he was like, I'm going to keep it on the down low unless I need something. And so he's, he's that's exactly that's such a Jacques move. Yeah. And Jacques's like, look, I got I started some trouble. You know me. I I don't want to deal with shit. <laughs> Fix this. I want you to hide this kid in your house. He's dangerous. There's a gang looking for him with with a fucking Uzi. <laughs> one, one Uzi. One Uzi. In this I know you got a wife and kids now, but I don't want to deal with this. I got school. I'm pretty sure the guy with the Uzi has a wig too. That- no, that was just some weird <laughs> Mexicans have weird hairlines. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, um, so he's just like, he's like, Jack, how can I say no to you? Of course, I'll take this kid and I'll play taxi. I'll just drive him around wherever he's got to go. <laughs> oh, my God. So he's like, oh, well, that's I'm glad you're going to you offer to be a taxi because I need to ride back because I got to go to school. I, I left my Kinjitashi case. 
he left it back at home, and he's like, I need you to take me there first, and then I need you to take over to community college. So they, I, I need to stop on the way and get a couple tacos. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're paying, of course, because and, you know you're. I'm the guest. Oh, and dry cleaning. Oh, and the tailor because my suit got ripped. So yeah, I, I left my wallet back home too. Can you pay for this? Whatever. I love you, Jacques. <laughs> so they go back and they see an ambulance. And he's like. Oh, yeah, that old lady. I forgot about her. Yeah, how I guess. Much, how much time has passed? <laughs> like half an hour. He's like, sucks to be her. Can I? And he walks up. Maria's there. The, the worst, like, they just put, like, a, a pile of clothes and put a blanket over it to be to stimulate Grandma on the gurney. <laughs> and then they find, we find out she had a heart attack later because they took her to a neighbor's house. Yeah. We forgot to let that out because he carries her to a neighbor's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she had a heart attack. What happened is she ran out because she was confused. And she's like, Martin! And she had a heart attack. Yeah. That's what happened to her. Yeah. So he's like, oh, really? He's like looking around. He's like, really? Oh, is that what happened? Did anybody see an Akinja Tache case anywhere? He's like, doesn't give a fuck at all. And the cops, like, they go, they come up and they're like, sir, oh, we have your Akinja Tache case. It's right here, sir. Uh, is there anything we can do for you? The cops are just sucking Jack's dick. He's like, no, I'm okay. Don't worry. I have to go to school. Can we drive you? No, no, no. I have somebody to do that. It's okay. <laughs> and Maria is just like, okay, I guess I'll handle this. You know, you're you, you're busy, Jacques. Don't let hey, me. Hey, have you seen Martin? Have you, where's my son? He's like, and he's like, no, I haven't. He he's, ran away. He ran really far. You know your son. He doesn't appear until four in the morning. Yeah. So he'll probably crawl in a window tomorrow or something. And he's like, well, what would I do without you, Jacques? Thank you for looking over my son. So I believe Jacques and Lee get back in uh, get Lee's. Back in the, uh, what what, was what a, van was that? An Aerostar? It was weak. It was a minivan. It was a minivan. It was, of some sort. It was a grocery getter. And... <laughs> We have a little heart to heart. First, he's like, "Wow, Jack, you were, you, you're, you're still keeping it up." He's like, "I had to give it up, you know. I don't want to be like Muhammad Ali, the greatest fighter in the world, when he looked like shit at the end, you know. I don't want to be like that. Uh, I don't want to be like that." He's like shaming Muhammad Ali. Why? He's such a prick. And then he's just like, "Well, funny, you bumped into this family because I know this family. Yeah, I knew his dad, Pedro. Yeah." He wanted to like take the he he wanted to start this like you know he was a social he was a what do they call Socialist, it a communist <laughs> no he was a community organizer oh. which we've learned from Obama is the biggest loser job you can ever have is to be a community organizer okay because remember remember the Republicans always would laugh about that like, yeah. community organizer huh anyway what so, has a community ever done for America so he's like yeah he wanted to stop the violence and then that gang. Killed him, man. They got a hold of an Uzi and they killed him. And then, of course, without him as our leader, we were like, "Fuck it." We just dissolved and we just went our way. We all went to our corners and we all stayed quiet. He was just like, "Jock, what? What is Jock?" Jock's immediate thing is that pussy didn't avenge his father's death. That's what Jock takes from the story. <laughs> he didn't try to avenge his father's death. He was a fool. He deserved what he got. And like Henry's like, "Look, in the real world, Jock, when you have bills and family and shit, you can't do this shit. You can't just murder people and just walk away." Well, I do that. No, Lee. He should have went and joined that fucking <laughs> gang. He would have muscle. He would have power. He would have it all. And he's like, look at you, you, you fat cat businessman. The guy owns a dojo in a strip mall. And he's just like, It's Shit. a rundown strip mall. <laughs> he's driving a fucking minivan from like 82. <laughs> he's like, you used to be a fighter and now you're shit. And he's like, let me out. Again, he sees that he's a half a block away from school. He's like, let me out. Jacques is, yeah, I could call on that one. <laughs> it is across the street. But Jacques is the one who's flashing the wad nonstop. <laughs> yeah. Nonstop. Never uses it. You notice that. <laughs> That's how he has the wad. Exactly. Oh, these fucking rich people, man. Trickle down economics, baby. Yeah. So and he's oh just like, oh he's like, God. he's like, let me out. Pick me up later. But be here but at three thirty. <laughs> Whatever you say, Jacques. It's three fifteen now. Your class only goes fifteen minutes. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I'll worry about that. Says <laughs> so Jacques. Shows up. Half hour late for his class. <laughs> All right, let me. I gotta set the stage. I get this is a great thing. Everybody's like fifty years old. Everybody. <laughs> so let me set the stage. We got one of those things. There's like one of those chalkboards that takes up the entire wall. There's yeah. this fucking fucking goodwill uh, hunting chalkboard. Yeah, it, meth everywhere. And the, the the we got the dean who's just sitting there, chalk hole. And we got the teacher, <laughs> and the teacher's like, 
Oh, Mr. Martini, how good of you to join us. And like, nothing, say nothing of it. Sits down, and he's like, would you care to figure out what's wrong? And this, this like, fucking cover is a giant chocolate. What's wrong? He's like, they offer it to the class, right, and no, no one's but, willing to answer. Right. No one knows. And so the fucking uh, uh, engineering professor, he was yeah. just like, well, you know what? I believe there's a certain jack hole here who's going to be taken. Why is he doing Macho Man Randy Savage voice? No, he's just like, <laughs> you got to do like a snob. Like, oh, Mr. Martin. Oh, okay. Snob like, Mr. Martin, I believe uh, you coming here late. You will be answering today's question. <laughs> is that that snob like? That was like some weird accent. I don't know where you. Anyway, the teacher's like, Mr. Martin, would you care to answer this? And then he's like, simple. It's E. Equals M D squared. But where does the D go? And then he's like, right there. And then the teacher goes, and then he just jaw just drops, and it all hits on him. He's like, unbelievable. We see- you just proved Einstein wrong. And then there's a, a nice golf clap starts, yeah. and then the whole fucking crowd just starts roaring with, except for one guy. Except one guy. I don't. I don't want to profile, but he was Arab. Probably a terrorist. <laughs> he's probably in an engineering class to learn how to take down a building. And of course. And he's he, just like, he's like, of course, Mr. Frog gets it right. Listen here. And then Martin, no, you see it. Like Martin's face just pops into screen. No shit, raghead. And then, <laughs> and then it's like, he actually, that's what he said. That's not a joke. He called him a raghead. And at first, I'm like, give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's a fan of the movie Trick or Treat, which we covered on Schlocktober, and he yes. likes the rag man. And he that's did, true. but no, he was making a racial slur. <laughs> but the guy was like, hey, I, I asked for it. So he, and then, then Martinez walks out. He's been in school for five minutes. He's going, he just, he pulled out a microphone from somewhere and dropped it and then left. Going full uh, that one badass guy from Breakfast Club. He fucking tosses his chair aside and just marches out of class. We see was shot from like feet height, and we just see panties drop because oh all God. the Hillary's well, in that, there. That fifty year old woman, yeah, the yeah. Hillary woman, she was in there, and she was just oh my God, the sweat was pouring. The whew. so I, I hope there are no school fans listening to this because that's the last time we ever see Martin in a school classroom. He goes back there a couple times, but it, it's like <laughs> never to class. It's just yeah. like to hang well, out. Well, shit happens. People shoot at him and all this shit. Oh, that's a good point. So, okay. <laughs> I lost my place. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. We got. Oh, ja- uh, Jacques goes back to Henry's place. I guess Henry picked him up. Henry, I think Henry didn't even leave. He just stood and waited until class was dismissed. Or maybe he was just at a light and Martine was done by the time the light turned green. <laughs> I was going to say what makes more sense is that Mar- uh, Lee had figured out, oh, I, I got to turn around. So he pulled into the parking <laughs> lot to turn around and then Jack was already coming back out. And he's like, I've already mastered engineering. I don't need it no more. I am an engineer messed up. So he's like, uh, Henry, I need to beat up people. I need to take some aggression out. Well, you can beat up my whole class if you want. So we just get worse. We get a stretching montage. I've never seen a stretching montage. I've seen stretching. We saw it last week. Done better by Jean Claude Van Damme. I just, I, I'm kind of grossed out by the fact that Mart, uh Lee has kept around some trunks for Jacques this whole time. Right. Well, you you probably had him framed. He he probably broke them, break in case of emergency, ass kicking needed. I have a feeling they were Jacques' old trunks. They he, were. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Lee, I love this you, is, but you're a little is, bit of a weirdo. This is my fucking, he's, he's in a codependent relationship he is, with yeah. a man. Yeah. And this is my f- one of my favorite parts. Not the, the ass-kicking montage, the fucking jock-sniffing montage of Martine in the background watching Jacques. 110%. <laughs> Kid is it is the he's classic like, like horny girl horny teenage girl. He's like high rubbing school. his nipples while he's watching. Dude, she's he's biting his lip. He's like his legs are crossed. He's like I'm so confused. <laughs> it was yeah no you're right to call that out. I'm glad you did. And Jack is just roundhousing the fuck. He's like murdering the entire class. He's, Henry's like I need the I need to fucking. Pay rent. I need these students. Why are you killing them? Uh, why? But and then this this blew me away. I can't believe this is what a piece of shit Jock is. What is this <laughs> fucking lesson? We've just learned that Henry Lee would take a bullet for Jock. Yes. Okay. I don't know why. Maybe there's some backstory they had to cut out for time. But he's like, okay, class, Jock wants to show you one more move. Jacques 
I think this no, I think this was a personal le- lesson for Martin because yeah, it was. Yes. Martin was like, but Jack yeah, didn't. You really but Henry ass. did not know this. Yeah, he was totally like in yeah. the dark. Henry was completely <laughs> unaware that uh, Jack was going to throw in his own lesson because right. I mean he just schooled everybody else, so he's about to school uh, Martin. <laughs> He puts Henry in a fucking chokehold. Yeah. Henry is struggling for life. For you air. see all the blood leave his face. Is that he goes white? That's what happens. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know how chokeholds work. Yes, it chokes the blood. I, all I know is you raise their arm three times. Well, yeah, it it, it, it affects the carotid artery. So yes, your blood stops the blood. Someone's blood been flow. Watching ER. So no, I've, I've seen people do it in MMA. But so um, so he's like, you think this makes you a badass? First of all, he told the kid like 15 minutes ago, I want you in a gang. Why aren't you in a gang? Why aren't you killing people and avenging your father? Why? And now he's like the total polar opposite. Guys, don't get you nowhere. Look, look. And he's like, and like fucking Henry's like, he's like fucking flailing around. Nobody, none of his students go to help him. And he's like, do you realize why I don't kill Henry Lee right now? (laughs) And Martin is just shaking his head. He was like, he had such a heart on a minute ago, and it's gone completely soft. He's like, what's going like on? Somebody just poured a whole <laughs> keep of MacGyver theme song on him. His dick is limp. <laughs> and so Jack goes on to explain, the reason I don't kill Henry Lee right now is because his wife will come for me with all of the Hell's Furies with her. And he has a son. Wait, did he have a kid? Yes. And that, that, that the message is violence begets violence. Even though, so 15 minutes ago, violence is the greatest answer to all your problems. You should have killed your your father's murderer. Now it's like violence begets violence. It is no good, and totally emasculates Henry in front of all of his students. That was the lesson that was learned. Fucking Christ! So Jock, after a hard day's work of. Really confusing the fuck out of Hard everybody. Hard day's work of just making everybody feel like shit. Yeah. Lee gives him a nice ride home. <laughs> <laughs> Again. And uh, the gang, of course, returns looking for Martine. Why? Why do they want this pussy in their gang? Hot free agent, man. God. <laughs> yeah, you. it's like, it's. You know, I hate to go back to all this quarantine shit, but it's like when you tell somebody you don't want something, then they want. They have to be at their fucking like, beach I, all I know, of a sudden. I know, for and, sure. All I want to do is go home and watch <laughs> shit. What? You guys want me to stay home and watch shit? It's like classic, just like fucking child. Wow, people right. don't grow up. Right. And it, it, so Lee, uh, or jo- I want it to be about Lee. Jacques gets back up to the house. He's on the stoop. He's about to walk in the door. And the fucking the gang members, I believe it's Alberto and Ernesto again. Yeah. They're just and, fucking harassing and him. And Jacques has had enough. So he just grabs him. Leave them alone! And then throws the guy out of the house. They walk right in the house. Yeah, that's right. They did. And then they say, all right, we'll leave. Even Maria steps out at that point, And she's like, look, man. <laughs> get the fuck off my stoop. And they're like, whatever, we'll, we'll be back. And they go across the street to their bus. <laughs> so then we get this nice little heart to heart. We get the backstory on Maria. She's just like, my family, they came to this country for a better way of life. What happened to them? I love that. Like, like he's trying, like, all fucking jocks thing about his pussy in his head, but he's trying to make it look like he's, like, listening yeah, to her. Yeah, this uh, podcaster is not a visual platform, so what I'll explain <laughs> here is Murray is staring off in the distance, <laughs> like, looking into my microwave soul and trying to be interested in what happened. she's spilling her guts. She's like, my parents, they died. What did they die of? Work. She said that like yeah. work killed my parents. <laughs> this very that's very like modern times though. And but they work so hard for this house, and I don't want this piece of shit. That's what he says, and he fucking punches <laughs> a hole through the wall to emphasize his point. Why? And he's like, I could flip this, no problem. I'm a great real estate developer too. <laughs> I can do everything. Oh my god. And- he- I, I wish, oh, I'm sorry. I wish that was an embellishment. He does say, <laughs> "I will flip this house for you." And she's like, "Nobody would want this house. This, 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 it's, it's on the other side of Fourth Street." There is a. Are bus. you going to change the street names? My neighbors live in a bus. <laughs> they dump a bucket of piss and shit every morning <laughs> onto the street. <laughs> No, 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 I could do it. Don't worry. <laughs> so she's like, Martin, Jack, you're great. While that's going on, we hear some noise, some screeching of tires. 
And then I guess he finally got the bullets <laughs> because Angel just starts shooting out. Drive by. This is a 90s gang movie. You got at least one drive by. Yeah, have a drive by. Why? Did you notice this? Why is there an exposed water pipe above the fucking doorway? I. What? Look, that, that is a piece of shit house. Because why would is. you? Why would you not put the pipes in the wall? I've seen that when you do like we like houses converted into apartments and they don't want to. Yeah, but I've never seen that in like a house. But we get we, it's, of course it's there, so we can see a bullet shoot it and the water yeah, spray well, out. Yeah, I got to get that effect. So uh, he goes. Jacques like you know what? I'm I'm getting bored with this. I, I'm gonna see what Henry can do about this. So yeah, he goes to Henry. Henry has weird contacts, so right. I'll give him a call. And he's pro- he probably knows some people in gangs too. <laughs> right. Everyone here knows gangs, yeah. so why, why why wouldn't Lee know a gang? So he goes to Henry. He's like Henry's like yeah. Where have you? Yeah, I can I can help you. Out. I got a friend I can talk to, Mister Park. <laughs> so we get this scene. We're out on the streets. I'm probably. Fifth, Sixth Street. It had to be fifth or sixth. And I this, recognize this. This limo pulls up, and they go, oh, "Hey, hey, Lee, Mister Parks here. You can talk to him." You go in. I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to say the 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 actor who played Mister Park. His backstory is he's a he's a he's a crime lord slash aspiring ventriloquist. Because you notice he <laughs> never opens his mouth when he talks. He talks through his teeth. <laughs> it was good. So he's like, "Lee, what can I do for you?" And he's like. We have a, you ever heard about this angel guy? He's a wild dog mm. with a lot of fleas. Oh. How many fleas? 20 to 25. <laughs> and he's talking like Thurston now. And he's like, he's like, uh, what about angel? What, I mean, is he any kind of force to be reckoned with? He's nothing without that Uzi. Of his. He knows about the Uzi. <laughs> He's like, get the Uzi and you break the gang. Oh, oh shit. And they're like, thank you, Mr. Park. Immediately, like, Jacques's like, you're doing, working with a, with a fucking, like, crime lord? He's like, I gotta survive, Jacques! <laughs> I don't want to pay protection for my shitty rundown dojo, but I don't want to die. I have a wife and kids. Listen, you fat cat <laughs> businessman with your wad of cash and your shitty rundown dojo, <laughs> I'll do this. By myself, and I'll make sure to tie your name into it and leave your card everywhere so you get roped into it. <laughs> and that he does, because Jacques, we cut back to Angel's house. You can see why there's kind of the low man, the the low man on the totem pole as far as gangs go, because they live, they all live communally in a rundown house. They, they are all. It's a giant house, but they're all sleeping in the same room. One guy sleeps in a corner. He's got a corner where he has all these. I want to say he's very respectful of women because there's pictures of women, but they're all clothed. Yeah. He just has bikini models. Yeah. No porno. Yeah. And he, that's, he, that's his porno corner. He has a <laughs> corner with all those pictures, and he's dead asleep, and he sneaks in. Angel, since he's the leader of the gang, he gets a bed, and he's in his bed with Angela. Angela. And he's like, Angel's sleeping, and then he feels a little prick that's in his throat. Fimp. And he's like, uh, uh. And Jacques's got to fuck that switchblade right at his throat. Angel immediately pisses himself. Immediately. Immediately. And he's like, hey, bitch, you better back off the Martin. Leave the Ardennes alone. And he's like, what have you say, man? It's like your dick, whatever. And then <laughs> and he's like, we don't have to go that far. <laughs> just leave them alone. And then like a ninja just disappears. Smoke bomb. <laughs> Gone and Angela immediately starts cracking up. She, she fucking she loves she she loves to see the the bright side of things. She's a half girl, half full girl. I think she just hates Angel. Well, yeah, she's kind of stuck with him. Maybe maybe it's because uh, once he got that Uzi, he became a different person. I don't know, but she starts cracking up, and then we just go blackout, and then you hear <laughs> he just, so he just bitch slaps her. So we're gonna actually follow Angel, and we haven't followed him since the opening of the movie, and. Uh, He's going over to Albert and Ernesto's, <laughs> checking in on that bus life. And I, I, I'm gonna go also, ahead. that bus covered with bikini pictures, too. Yes, you're right about that. <laughs> so uh, I, I guess maybe use it for toilet paper. Who, I don't know. <laughs> like. So who would you say is getting laid here? Is it Alberto uh, or it's got No, because like in the world of Bert and Ernie, Bert never gets laid. So it's yeah. got to be Ernesto getting laid. Okay. So uh, Berto is out. Just hanging out. <laughs> Maybe he's waiting his turn. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just, they just have like a, a curtain between yeah, their... They, their oh, f- that's all they have. And you yeah. and you hear the soft moans of some lovemaking <laughs> in the in the back of the bus. Oh, delay! And uh, Angel walks in, and so he starts talking to Albert. 
Alberto. And, um, and of course, Ernesto comes out with his lady, and he's explaining, hey, the Ordonians is, they're, I got a great, we're going to stop bothering them because they're going to start paying us. Five well, they heard that the French guy had, had he, he said, "Hey, what what do you know about that French guy?" He's like, "I don't know." He's like, "We came by." Well, why did he come by? Because he wanted to fucking beg me not to hurt him. That's why. Oh, okay. Because you know, okay. he was totally bitched out. So he, he had yeah. to like build himself up. You could tell he's coked out of his mind too. And he's like, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll let you live if you pay us protection, a hundred, two hundred dollars a month." Oh. Good job, Murray. But he's like, but I'd let it go until they, you know, they bury that that old bitch. But then, then we're gonna be making some money, man. He's like, he's always I fucking pull him up by a bootstrap. Say Boot? what you will about Angel, but he has the entrepreneurial spirit. He really does. He and, absolutely does. And so this, like, while much like Trump, while he's lying, ideas start clicking in his head, and he's like, we can make money off of this. Hydrocortisone, whatever the fuck that was. Uh, yeah, hydrocortisone. And he's just like, we can start paying, charging people protection. And oh they're like, God. that sounds like a good idea, Holmes. And he's like, hey, all this talking's got me horny. Uh, you mind if I f- fuck a girl? Is, is she like loud? He, he He's doing that thing where he's like, do you mind if I... And he's already parting <laughs> Ernesto out of the way. Like, get back there. Sit and listen to, to what's about to happen. Yeah, he's like, is she a screamer? No, she's pretty chill. Good, because I don't like it when, you know, it bothers. I got a hearing problem. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't like screaming. And he just takes her back, and we assume does some dirty deeds to her. Dirt cheap. So, Jacques and Maria. Jacques back at Maria's. Back and forth, back and forth. And he's just like, hey, uh, have you seen my Kinjitashi case? Oh, I think you left it up in your room. So he goes up to his room. Uh oh. He see, notices there's some blood on the doorknob. Yeah. That's not a good sign. Oh, boy. He's like, hey, is that time of the month? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and he's like, well, okay. Opens up. Angela is in his bed with her throat slit. Oof. You don't want to. I don't, I don't like that. So instead of going, holy shit, call the cops. There's a dead body. He's like, closes the door quietly. Yep. Goes back down. He's like, hey, Maria, I'll, I'll drop you off at, at your work. And by me, I mean I'm going to call Lee. <laughs> He's actually already on his way. I, I told him yesterday uh, to stop by by noon. So, so Lee comes over. He drops Maria off at work, then takes yeah. Jock over to school, other part of town. <laughs> you notice, ja- I think this is what the move is. Jock always wants to get out like a, a block away from school because you don't, like, like the kids don't he want the, want to be... the scene yep. with the nerd. Yep. So he's like, you can drop me off here. Yep. But you're the school. It's just right. There. No, it's cool, Lee. Just drop me off. So he, he drops off. And then we see the scene in the car. We see mini Mike Moore is back <laughs> from Suicidal Tendencies. Fucking eight-year-old kid. This, this gang. Is the, this is the best. This, this is, is the best. This, no, this is the worst gang ever. <laughs> like, They're like, all right, we're going to have a fucking eight-year-old shoot Jacques. So they're like, hey, man, you've done this before. Sure, I've done it. So... They're, they're getting ready. They're getting ready to do their drive-by. As luck would have it, a bus, not Ernesto and Alberto's bus, but a bus, blocks our boy Jacques. So the kid's like, well, fuck it. I got to shoot somebody. So he just starts opening fire in the crowd. It's like fucking Kent State all over again. He starts killing people, misses Jacques. Jacques springs into action because for some reason the car pulls over. I don't know why. Oh, they run into a bicycle rider. That's why the, the car pulls over. Jacques grabs Mini Mike Muir, pulls him out of the car, grabs the kid's gun, <laughs> tells a total stranger, get over here, hands a stranger a gun, goes, don't let them get away. And it's, it's like this black, it's like middle-aged black, because everyone at this college is middle-aged. She's like, okay, whatever you say. So she's got this gun. She's holding fucking Mini Mike Muir and had a gun on this car, the, the fucking gangbangers go, fuck it. They just take off and leave the little kid. It takes five people to hold this 10-year-old down. I don't know what's going on. Uh, one of the guys takes off in the car, too. So, Mark, yeah. so Jacques chases him. Yeah. All right, you take it from there. So Jacques chases the kid down, or chases the, 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 the car down. He manages to stop it because why wouldn't he? And he fucking uh, he takes out the guy in the car, I guess. He beats um, him up in front of a, like a tennis court for some reason. And, that's he, and why he fucking he, destroys the guy. He smashes the guy's face on a bench. All all the all the fucking cool tennis people are coming over with their sweaters on or little white shorts, and they're just like, "What are you doing? This is the minority man." He drove by, drove by, shoot, sh- shot at me. He's a bad guy. 
Sure, sure. So we cut back to Martin at staying at Lee's place rent free and all, and he's like, "Take me back home." And he's like, "Whatever, whatever you guys tell me, I'll do that." I mean, he has confirmed that the dead body is gone at this point. So oh like, yeah, we left you know. out the fact that he did. He goes when they find a dead body. He doesn't tell Maria. He tells Lee. Yeah. He's like, "Lee, I found a dead body." And as a, if you're a normal person, your first reading is, "We got to kill these motherfuckers." Not let's call the police. I'm sure yeah. that's what Lee was thinking. He's like, "What? Well, no. Right, Jack? That, let's just, let's kill these people. Yeah, let's not get the police involved." So Martin takes Lee back home, and then he's just like, "I I don't know what to believe. I'm going to see if that body's there." He yeah. goes back. He goes to uh, Martin's room, Jacques' room, and it's totally cleaned up, pristine. Nothing. It doesn't out even of look place. like a drive-by happened at this house. Perfect. Well, no, that house is fucked up because you, 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 <laughs> yeah. we learn that Lee's like, not only am I a great guy, my whole fucking class is a great guy. We're going to fix your house for you. We're going to clean up your house for you. So Lee, they, Jock doesn't deserve you. He really doesn't. And this is where we cut back to Jock. And what is, what, what, what is Jock been up to? Well, no, we cut back to Angel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like they're just hanging out, chilling. They're celebrating. They kill some. They didn't kill Jacques. They killed some people. So they're happy. they they hear they hear something in the garage. Right. So Angel's like, someone's fucking with my car. And runs. I like, grabs that Uzi. And he's like, his hand shakes like fucking Don Knotts from fucking Barney Fife. And he's like, you, you <laughs> see him almost have a heart attack when like the drawer won't open to his gun, and he's just like, <laughs> I gotta get the gun. And then he grabs it, goes out there, and, and he's like. Ah! Screams like a girl, and because he sees Angel, uh, one dead body's good for another because he's they're playing musical of dead bodies basically. Yeah. Because Jacques has put fucking uh, Angela, Angela in his, in uh, in he's, the in yeah, the convertible, he stuck his own dead girl blood all head. over that fucking upholstery. It's hard to get out. That's hard to get out. We we saw it from Pulp Fiction. We know that. And so he screams like a girl, and they're like, "What the fuck? What's happening? Did you see a mouse?" He's like, "No, man." That's my fucking girlfriend. We got to kill that guy. He actually, he actually fires off, almost kills he one does, of his own yeah, guys. He does. That's the, fr- the second time we saw him. Well, we didn't see him do the drive-by. We know we did it, but we didn't see it. This is the first time we saw him actually shoot the gun. Though. Yes. So the, we're back at Henry. Jacques, nowhere to be found. He should, he's not even in school. I don't know what Jacques's doing. Henry is busy cleaning up a total stranger's house yeah. for free. Well, we did learn that he has some kind of connection to him. At well, least. yeah, but he bailed on them pretty quick once he, he Pedro really, got uh... killed. And Jacques pulls up. And says, it's like a fucking remote control car. It's this tiny car. I've, my lawnmower has more power than this car. It's like, <laughs> you can barely hear this car. It's like a Tesla's are louder than this it fucking car. It is super unimpressive, but Lee <laughs> still comes out being a fucking awesome fret. And he's like, dude, is that the fucking 1500 Roaster CC? <laughs> Oh, What's that one on? Double A or triple A batteries? <laughs> How could you even afford that? Like, and he's like, "Well, you just know." He I pats, he pats the wad in his pants, and he has been harping Lee, Harper Lee, <laughs> did it uh, about how he was a fat cat businessman who sold out. This motherfucker's no. going to dealerships, dropping straight cash. He, Jock is so entitled. I bet he was like, "Let me take it for a test drive," and he just took it. He's like, "This is my car now." <laughs> Maybe. So he's like. So, so Lee starts hammering him. He's like, what's going on with you? You're fucking starting gang wars <laughs> over here? Because Lee or, or Jock, Jock brags about how he put the dead body in yeah, Angel's car right. in the garage. And Lee's like, what the fuck are you doing? And then he's like, because Lee is, uh, he's this isn't his first rodeo with Jock. He's like, Jock. You, you do this all the time. You You're, start gang wars, and then you walk away. You just leave. I've known you in five <laughs> different countries, and you start every, a gang war and Every leave. ghetto we've been to, the French ghetto, the Hong Kong ghetto. Did we mention, I don't know if we were we were going to get we, to it, or we, we haven't go gotten ahead. to it, but there's that scene there, were, yeah. where, is it, are we talking about where Lee... Starts rattling off Jacques' credentials to, to. Oh my god! Did that? Did we? Did we pass that already? I, I, we never rattle off his credentials. Oh. I don't know if it comes up later or now. Because, or I what. don't know because I love that scene because I hope I hope we don't. Well, maybe this happened before or maybe it happens later. But I got to talk way. about this scene because they're at Lee's place and fucking. Uh, he explains it to Martin. Yeah, so I think this happened Martin, before. Yeah, because Martin is like, who gives a fuck? 
about these dumb fucking Chicanos. And then and then he's like, Jacques shows up. And he's like, I guess your father is a dumb fucking Chicano. Oh, and then he's like, well, no, I this, guess you're a dumb this fucking Chicano. comes up Kishan. in a minute here, but oh, it's, oh, it's okay. still such a powerful fucking and, But scene. before that, Henry's just like, he's just like, God damn, Jacques, he just thinks he's the shit. He's like, well, because he is the shit. Jacques is an expert in everything. <laughs> Not just engineering. He's just doing. He's dabbling in engineering now. Yeah. He finds something. He becomes an expert on it, and then he moves on to the next thing. And then we have the Chicano thing. And then Jack shows up and like shames him. I guess you're a dumb Chicano. Well, no, I'm not. See, that's he's like now you know profiling is bad. So, uh, after Lee gives Jack some grief about everything, Jack's like. I won't be dealing with any of this bullshit <laughs> hands on fucking work. I know I started all this, but I will not help out. I don't know how to use a hammer. My fists are hammers. I take zero responsibility. <laughs> oh my god. We're doing the best. If it weren't for me, there would be 100,000 dead. I'm doing 10 out of 10. Now I have to go to class. Oh, I'm a 10 on the Richter scale. So he pulls out the little remote controls and goes. Zoo, zoo. <laughs> And he's driving by. He passes by another party he, store. And Richard Ramirez is hanging out there from earlier. <laughs> and he's like, holy fuck, it's that guy who beat us up in the bush in the beginning of the movie. So they tail him. To, yeah. uh, so apparently uh, Jacques, he's got his computer class. Yep. Or he's got to do some work on the state-of-the-art 1994 gateway computers. Exactly, yep. And he's, so he's on there. He knows He's like a fucking ninja. So he's looking out the, out the window, sees the guys watching him. Yeah. He and knows they, what's up. They called up Angel. Right. And they were like, Angel, we got, we got his car. And so we know we know something's going on. And, and then, like, I love how the, the lab teacher's like, did you like this? The, the, this is the, the greatest fucking computer. We can try this other one, though, if you want. Get out of here. Move, move. And he kicks this person out of the way. And it shocks. is pitch black out, by the way. It's 10 p.m. <laughs> She is still there because Jacques is still there. And so she's trying to usher out the few people who are taking advantage of the situation. And she's just like, have you seen internet porn, Jacques? Because <laughs> and there was, this is 93. There was no internet porn. That's how state-of-the-art this computer lab was. Yeah. And that like, or she, that was a and, meta, or some kind of, come on, you know. And he, it. like, closes up his attache case. Nothing in it. He just closes it off. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm busy. I don't have time. Face palms her, walks out. Well, come like, back later. I'll give you a discount. I'll let you have a computer if you have me. <laughs> it's like, I don't have time. <laughs> so he goes to the parking garage, and then his, he's just like, his ninja sense is tingling. Yeah, well, he noticed them. Yeah, yeah. And so, so he's, he's, like, he's like, if I was them, I'd plant a bomb. So I'm going to check my car. He's got to gotta check the battery pack because he's like, if you're <laughs> going to put a bomb anywhere, it's on the battery pack. So looks it up, and sure enough, there's right on those Duracells. Stick of dynamite. <laughs> There's a stick of dynamite with a watch like glued on it. Of course. And in typical Jacques fashion, he just throws it over his shoulder. He's like, look, like he didn't care. Blows up somebody else's car. He <laughs> didn't give a shit. And the, it happened to be that I don't think Angel was there at the time. It was um, uh, Ron Ramirez or whatever you're calling him. Richard Ramirez. Richard Ramirez and his gang. They were kind of like looking through the uh, review mirror. They weren't like facing it. So they hear the explosion and they're like, we fucking got him. And so they just start driving off. But even this assurance only lasts two seconds because Jack goes flying out. <laughs> well, as oh, fast as you can with a remote yeah, control car. I was going to say. You just fast, hear this for the power. <laughs> as fast as four fucking double A's will take he does, you. He gets out the car and, like, pulls it back. <laughs> like, those, <laughs> those <laughs> <laughs> like five times, yeah, yeah. builds that friction up, takes oh my off, God. flies out. They go to a chase in them. They go. But then Rick Ramirez notices. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that what name up again. Well, it's, it's Richard Ramirez. Rick would be. Oh, sure. okay. I, okay, I got that. So they, they spot him a moment later. So it's like, what was the point of he, the distraction? Because he's not scared. He, he, there is no distraction. He just didn't care about other people's welfare. He's like, I don't want to deal with this bomb. He just threw it away. So the gang is like giving him chase and they're like driving through the hard streets and they're like cutting through industrial town. Well, they go and they, I think they go to the wharfs because they there, do there's, end there's, up there's at a, the wharfs. Because there's a warehouse. Yeah. And, and they're backing up trucks. They're loading them up. So they got, like, the big, tall, you know, like, flatbeds and everything. And, and the, thankfully, he's driving a remote-control car because yeah. it's small enough it goes underneath the trailer. 
but these guys got the fucking you know hydraulics on. Yep. I don't know why they have the hydraulics up to the top, and they they get it's more menacing though. They way. get lodged underneath the the, the trailer, and of course. Since it's Jacques, all the guys in the warehouse immediately fall in love with him. So yeah. they join in. They help him beat up the gang. Yeah, the, the two gang members, they get out and they start running away. Because at this point, I think Jacques was chasing them for some reason. Yes. Oh, my God. Jock is pissed. And so the one guy gets away while the other one runs right to the side of uh, one of the truck doors. And so the trucker was just like... Hey, I like my black coffee and I like my my well, my perps. They're, they're smoking a doobie. They're them. just sitting there. They're like, "Fuck, this is a union job. We're, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna take our time on this." And they're like, "Hey, you ever hit a Mexican with a car door? It was always the first time for everything." So when Richard Ramirez goes by, they open the door. He face plants right into the car door. And so Jock continues to chase the other perp. Yeah, and he, he goes Messi. They catch <laughs> Marte. Wait. Mate? Mate. Well, he makes a guy Mate. Yeah. Because, once again, like, none of these fucking other, like, extras have any, obviously, experience with fighting, fake or real. So, it's just, he's, like, manipulating their body to make it look like a fight. It's awkward, yeah. And he puts them in, like, in an arm bar. And he learns about a, a certain plot to get the kid and his mom. Yeah. Tonight, right. And they're going to burn down the house. And so, John. And he's like, are you going to stay here for the police? Sure, sure. Right. And then he just snaps the guy's arm off. And then he does a fucking dolomite, dolomite move. Yeah. Where he, he does the put out the cigarette move with his foot on the guy's neck. And of course, they added in in post production <laughs> like millions of bones cracking and shattering under the power of a million suns. It, it was intense. So, okay. So we're back at Mar- uh, Martin's house. And Lee, god damn it, lovable and naively. He's like, Do you, you know how to drive? Yeah. Here's the keys to my car. Okay. We saw Lee get there in the morning. It is now like midnight. He was still <laughs> working on the house. He's still chipper as all <laughs> fuck. Martin, can you drive a car? I think so. I've read a book about <laughs> driving cars. I've seen cars. Yeah. Well, how hard could they be? I slept in a couple of cars. I played uh, some video games where you drive a car. I played GTA. He's like, that's all you need here. Throws him the keys. He's got to go pick up his mom, mom. Right. Because that was supposed to be uh, Jacques' job. But Jacques obviously has better things to do. Yep. So he's like, hey, take my car. He's like, okay, thanks. So he he heads out to fucking get his mom. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go over to his mom now, Maria. Social worker. She's hard at work. We, we've we skipped all the scenes. I love, there, there, there was an earlier scene. She's asking her... The Mother-in-law has died. And the her, police have showed up. Her house her. has been shot at. And she's like, can I please leave an hour early? The police are at the work <laughs> yeah. because they need to ask her questions. And she tells the boss, who looks at, like, five police officers, she's like, you're going to have to make up these hours. <laughs> like, this is the perfect, uh, like, this is Elon Musk at his finest <laughs> right here. Like, for real, open America now. Right. Did you see that? Yeah, because I heard the reason he wants to do that because he, he needs to get like a eighty million dollar bonus or something if something happens like in a week or something like that. Fucking asshole! It's a piece of shit. Uh, so much like this boss because she's like, "Gotta make those hours." He's like, "I will. I'll, I'll work extra. I'll, I'll do a Walmart and I'll work overtime and not get paid." Yeah. So midnight, she's still at work crunching the keyboard, and there's a little rapping at the door. Rap tap tap. And it's fucking Angel, and he doesn't just rap and tap. He fucking opens doors. And he, he rapes and tapes. He ra- <laughs> because he, well, we, don't, we never see it, fortunately. But before, before that happens, a, uh, a cop shows up. I thought it was like, like a security guard. But it was, it was a, yeah. And he's like. It was just like school security guard. And he's just walking up. Like he's, he's not even going to go. He's just going to check to see the door's locked. Yeah. And they just fucking shoot him with a shotgun and kill. They, finally, they got another gun. Yeah, they at first security guard was like, "You're double parked." Is that a raped woman on the right there? <laughs> they're like, "Ah, oh, fuck." I don't want to get involved, but I'm just saying you might want to look in. I want to call the police about that. And they just go, "Got to murder him," so they kill the cop. So, hey, Murray, we just brought it up. They have a second gun now. Yes, they got a shotgun. They're learning. They're moving. They're up. adapting. They're moving up. And so. Uh, we go to you know Angel wasn't at the rape because he had other plans. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's driving by Lee's dojo in the strip mall, 
And apparently, not only they have guns, we have to get their hands on some dynamite. They got some hands on dynamite. Well, we saw it in the last. And scene. this is amazing dynamite, Griff, because this is the kind that produces no fire at all. Yeah. Because they throw it in these dojo, blow it up, no fire at all. It's just an explosion. Just, an, explosion. just cloud of smoke and noise. Yeah. And so, uh, fortunately, nobody gets killed. And then we go back to Martin just cruising around. He's he's doing pretty good. I mean, he's driving like 20 on a 45 road, but he's doing okay. <laughs> he, he he knows how to stop at the signs and everything. And he arrives uh, up to his mom's work where there's ambulance, there's cop cars, there's reporters. Like, the news is there. Right. Everything. Cop stops him. He's like, wait, before you go in there. Oh, you, by the way, your mom got raped. Before you go in there, what's that jock guy like? <laughs> he looks pretty cool. He, is he cool? I saw him drink a yoo and he just poured it over himself, and, and well, he's I like, "My mom was raped." What? What? No, he pushes through. We got her. You know, if you've ever had anything traumatic, to you, you got to have a blanket over you. So she's lying on the gurney with that blanket, and she's got like little blood trickle down her mouth, yeah. and she's like, "Martine, they're gonna burn down the house. You gotta, gotta go back. Promise me, go back home. I'll walk this off. It's no big deal. And be a man." For the first time in your miserable life. You fucking nerd. Be like Jacques. Be <laughs> like Jacques. And he's like, I will. Uh, and he runs out. The guy's like, wait, wait. Is Jacques really that cool? Please tell me more about Just Jacques. tell my mom I'm doing what she asked. And so Martin heads straight back home. He goes actually over to Frank's house first. And he parks uh, the van, Lee's van. And he's just... Martin's at least kind of cool, considerate too, because he parks the van uh, over by Frank's. Right. And he's like, "Hey, f- I'm going to leave this van here because it's Lee's." He also pre-programmed all of his stations to go to country music, so he's not that great a guy. He did gospel and country, and yeah, he parks it next to uh, a Frank's house. And he's like, "Frank, you got no- you're just sitting here getting drunk. Watch this car." Yeah, and Frank is a little like, "Wait, what are you? What's <laughs> happening here?" Because the street is a buzzing. Well, well, also he's drunk as fuck. But... He, he's drunk as fuck. He's all spent on some kind of metaphines or something. Martin's so, like, I got to do what a man's got to do. So he goes home. It's very home alone, this scene here. Grabs the old double barrel shotgun. Puts out the fucking uh, the, the, the Tonka trucks, you know, by the staircase. <laughs> arms yeah. a couple paint cans, you know. Waits on the porch with a double barrel shotgun. Waiting like a, like a fucking midget Mad Max. And Murray, I mean, when you're basically asking for trouble, what do you do? You... Pop on that Bob Seger night moves because that brings uh, the the gang members out. Ernesto and Alberto are like, do you hear that, Holmes? <laughs> That's a silver bullet band. <laughs> and so it's like <laughs> it's like the Pied Piper. It just brings out all it, the cholos. It really does. It really does. People don't know that Bob Seger huge in the Mexican community. You wouldn't think so. But. And so. And then they, uh, this is what I'm called for. They're fucking up the picket fence. You don't have to do that. I, they were just so furious because he had the treble wrong. And they're like, you're fucking this up, Bob Seger. <laughs> and while that's going on, so they start crowding them. Frank's like, oh, shit, I got to get involved. And you brought up Frank's acting earlier. This is where we all we see it all come together. Right. He's fighting the drug overdosing, the fucking alcohol, the PTSD, the, the various PTSDs, the wheelchair, the fact that there's no sidewalk, that he's going through like a fucking rubble. He is acting his ass off. He goes to the back door of uh, Martin's house, Martin's house, Martin. with his M- fucking M sixteen. Yeah, his only su- his only souvenir from Nam, and the you know what the the greatest enemy of a guy in a wheelchair is, Griff, a gate with a lock. And it, it's it's the lock where it's on the inside, where yeah. like any like we could stand up and you know right. pull. It, and like then he's, he's, like, yeah. he's like, no, and he starts beating his you fuck these useless legs and this non-functioning. Penis. Oh. And it's like, don't, don't be so rough on yourself. Dude. He looks to his left and notices a tower of trash. And he's <laughs> like, wait a minute. I know how to climb he's, towers of trash. Frank is working harder than Jacques ever did for anybody. He really did. Yeah. He's crawling through trash <laughs> to get up and pull his fucking body, his withered body, grabs that latch, gets open. Poor old <laughs> dead grandmas in the trash. They, they just <laughs> they couldn't her out. It's, it's like COVID. They couldn't afford a funeral. Exactly. And he's, he's crawling up the back steps, throws his own body against the door to knock it open. Martin doesn't even notice. That there's like there's all this hammering and all. Well, I mean, he is kind of busy fighting off like 14 <laughs> gang members out front. And I will say for pussies, these guys got balls because 
they don't have a gun, and he has a gun pointed at them, and they're not even scared. Yeah, they weren't. But I think it's because he must have, like, birdseed shot or some shit because he shoots <laughs> a guy, and it's a little trickle of blood. Yeah, yeah. If you shot somebody with a shotgun, their leg would get blown off. And they, the gang members are all within, like, a... 15 foot circumference. So and I want to like, give them close. props. They always give him time to reload because he only he only has a double barrel shotgun. Okay. He was smart about it, though. He would only shoot once and then he would uh, put in a, another bullet. So if he needed to, he could immediately <laughs> pop it back up and shoot. So, so it's a standoff. We got him surrounded. It's like the fu- it looks like a scene from Night of the Living Dead. We got the guy on the porch with the shotgun. We got zombies all around him, crowding him in. Oh, my God. Then... Fucking Angel shows up with a fucking stick of dynamite. Oh, no. Frank shows up first. Oh. And he hits that porch, and he's just like, hey, you got any more of those beers? He's like, I don't have beers. Because <laughs> actually what had happened is Martin. I think Frank did a tour with Nam with Ray Jackson from Bloodsport. I think you're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> the fart was very symbolic. <laughs> like, that was their, their, their like, uh, th- silent farts. Or I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going for. I don't either. But, uh, yeah, Frank shows up with that AR-15. Yes. He, I think M-16. The, he shoots a guy in the hip. Yeah, he shoots guy. He's got, you know, f- he's got the double banana clip clipped together, like all the illegal shit. Where he's, he's got like, his fucking Punisher camo cap on. Yeah, he's ready to he go. He can take out everybody, no problem. But he is even just like, stay back. Right. And then finally. He's standing his ground. He, oh, that's all Well, he's, he's sitting his ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Ah, uh, the cheap joke. I Very love it. good. Uh, he actually had to pull himself up a seat because <laughs> he was uh, crawling on the ground. Uh, but then Jock shows up and throws a stick of dynamite at one of the main. Members. Angel shows yeah. up, throws Angel, a stick of dynamite, me. and then you're like, "Oh my god, all is lost!" Because Frank, he's in a wheelchair; he can't grab that stick of dynamite in time. And then you see a close up of that dynamite stick, and then the freshest white Reebok you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Puts it out. Oh. It's fucking Jacques to the rescue. And so he's finally ready to b- b- fucking destroy these fence breakers. They're just, d- this is what they're going to do to the wall. This is what they're <laughs> going to do to the wall. They're just going to break it. Well, Jacques's like, kill them all and go throw them out. <laughs> and then he just leaps in action. And then while that happens, coincidentally, Henry shows up in his tr- in a truck. With, poor with, that poor picket with his, fence. With his students. You're right. He's farting. Oh, my God. He made his students Fix a fucking house. Now they're in a gang war. <laughs> I'm, I'm more worried about the picket fence because he runs right through it. Why are they fucking up this picket fence? It was like what the, did it do to them? Oh, my God. The symbol of America, man. Oh, uh, It was a perfect white picket fence, too. There was no wear and tear on it at all until now. Oh, my God. So there's, the, the fight, the kung fu fight in is crazy. And Angel's just in his car pointing his <laughs> Uzi around, not shooting. <laughs> Scared just, of his own shadow. He's just pointing his gun around and... All the fighting's happening. Jock's beating. Jock us. is. Br- he's doing some Steven Seagal shit. He snaps the dude's fucking leg. Yeah. He's like literally murdering people. And like fucking Frank's like, I'm not let- going to be let out of this fun. So he starts shooting people and killing them. Bodies everywhere. And then uh, Angel finally gets courage not to shoot his Uzi, but to throw another stick of dynamite. No, 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 no. no. But a- no. did I say Angel? Because yeah. he throws a stick of dynamite and Jock gets it. Does he? I thought yeah. Jock just got his own stick of dynamite. He might have, but there's a live stick of dynamite out there, and yeah. Jock throws it into Angel's car. Right. And so Angel finally has to retreat, but he's retreated without his Uzi. But the car blows up, and it was a great tension killer because everyone takes a minute just to laugh because it's crazy. It's just yeah. a ridiculous scene. So everyone, like... You know what? We're killing each other, but you got to laugh at this. This yeah. is so this silly. Because Angel's so angry. My car! Oh. And everyone has a good chuckle, but they're like, wait, we got to get back to some fisticuffs. Yeah. I think this is where they actually like slow it down, and Jock is like, no, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to fight this piece of shit. No, no, no. They just start fighting. They just start fighting again? Yeah. Okay. And of oh, course, right. of course, Jacques, the only guy besides Henry has any training. So he just destroys Angel. This is yeah. like this is believable because I could kick the shit out of Angel. Yeah, I didn't. Henry. They didn't. He didn't build it up like I did. They just started fighting. But right. it was Angel and Jacques and Jacques. Right. Yeah, he's just he's toying with him. He's picking him apart, pummeling the shit out of him, yeah. ready to kill him. And then Henry goes, wait. Huh? Huh? Points to Martin. 
Let Martin finish him off. Let him feel the, the joy of murdering somebody. This is bringing a new side of Henry, because Henry's been <laughs> awesome, but he's like, wait, let's let Martin get the kill. Right. And then, and then this is where Shaq goes, all right, here are the rules. All of a sudden, everyone's going to follow rules now. Yeah. Let those two fight, and whoever wins, wins. And then that's it. And they're like, that sounds reasonable. you know." Angel, by the way... Heavily concussed. <laughs> he's got so much fucking brain well, damage Angel at this point. Well, Angel tells, he's like, fuck that. Somebody shoot this motherfucker. And then one, I guess another gang member got another gun because he goes for a gun and fucking uh, Frank kills him. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Follow the rules or die, bitch. So, yeah, like you said, Angel has been pummeled to an inch of his life. And now that, it's a fair fight. A fucking Jock curb stomped him. <laughs> so he's like, fucked up. Oh. So Martin's like, let me take off. Here, somebody hold my le- my denim jacket. Yeah, and then he, as a, even though as fucked up as Angel is, it's a back and forth. Like it that's is, how yeah. it's like. Why does anyone want Martin in their gang? He's a loser. As Corny explained the other day, it was a one-two where they exchanged <laughs> punches. Uh, but but yeah, of course, of course, Martin gets the edge. He's got all that teen angst in him, and. Angel is heavily concussed and he's got like a broken shoulder. He's ble- he's got and- fucking bleeding from his brain and shit. <laughs> again, it looked like brain he was wearing fluids a- pouring out his nose. And it looks like he's wearing a wig again because it's just like his skull <laughs> is just like shooting up. Looks from- like he just did three rounds of Chung Lee. Oh my god! And so yeah, he finally gets his drop. So he's just kicking, kicking like a uh, fucking uh, Angel in the head to the point where Shock's like, whoa. Whoa, calm the fuck down. Jacques said that. Yeah. And so what, then all of a sudden we start hearing in the background police sirens. We see the helicopter. Jacques's like, I'm, I got to do what I got to do. So Jacques just disappears like he always does. And the ga- like all the gangs are just like, Meh, all right. <laughs> and they disappear. Henry's like, look, uh, I got to. I clean. I have, after spending all day cleaning up your place, I have to clean up my place. I, I got to go clean so my place. I got to get Are you going to come over and help me clean my place now? <laughs> This motherfucker, <laughs> that's what I want. And then he's like, come on, come on, Jacques. Jacques, oh, and he's like, Jacques. He's going to go by the school, pick up his engineering degree after five minutes of school. <laughs> he's like, that's such a Jacques move. God damn and it. And then it just goes, Angel Town. <laughs> you hear that great song from the Hotheads? And that's it. Fucking Murray, we knew. <laughs> I was like, we should do this. And then you watched it, and you're like, we should do this. And then we both realized this is going to be such a long episode because it's so fucking it, – it's so twisty and turny and long and, and irritating. fucking irritating. And I'm so happy to never watch this movie again. I'm glad you brought up irritating because our next movie is going to be equally irritating. Oh, it's got a guy geez. we've already covered that we both generally hate. I'm thinking – is the name Lauren Avedon ring a bell to you? It does, kind of. The star of – King of the Kickboxers. Oh, I don't want to do this, but I made a promise to one of our listeners, and hey, we, I'm cool with this. We, uh, we honor our promises, unlike some people, unlike Jock, unlike Jock for sure. So we're I've gonna decided go buy a rug we're soon. gonna. I need to get. I've got. I've got so much frustration from all this quarantine shit. I need to let out a little bit more. Next, the week after, we're gonna, we're gonna do an awesome movie, but we're gonna. We're going to be angry for one more week. We're going to do the sequel, yet not sequel, to No Retreat, No Surrender. No Retreat, No Surrender. No Retreat, No Surrender <laughs> 2, which has absolutely fuck all to do with the first movie. Nice. As none of the stars from that movie. No Bruce, Bruce Lee reflections? N- I don't know, because I've never seen it, but it's okay. on YouTube if y'all want to check it out. So we're, that's going to be next week's episode, and stay safe and keep it warm. <laughs>